Contest in the foggy bog evening haze, which Waldo Wigglesworth read one day on a streetcar. Look here, fellas. Gadgeteers, inventors, and do-it-yourselfers, attention. Big arts and crafts contest. You can enter it, Uncle Waldo? Why not? I'm as crafty as the next one. Could I see that? Please. Bring in something you've made by hand. Best gadget wins first prize. Where does it say that? Please, old man, don't read over my shoulder. What's first prize? A trip for three to glamorous, glittering Bismarck, North Dakota. Uh, gee, that's fun, pal, USA. Hoppity, I'm going to enter that contest. Could I read that now? What is it with you, nosy? Well, I hate to seem pushy, but that's my paper. Oh. That evening, our heroes set to work. Well, what shall I make for the contest? My uncle made a ship in a bottle once. Ships in bottles or old hat? No, no, my uncle was in the bottle. Yeah, that's different. Of course, he was just a tadpole at the time. Good idea, Hoppity, but it doesn't sing. Yeah, how about a statue of Venus de Milo with a clock in her stomach? Where did you get such a revolting idea? Yeah, from this television commercial. She's got these tiny time pills, see? No, I... no, that's in bad taste. Well, they don't taste bad. They're chocolate coated. Wait, wait! It's coming! It's coming! They stand back up at eat. I've got it! I can see it just as plain! What? 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 Picture it! Yeah, yeah, yeah! A vision of loveliness! Yeah, yeah! yeah. The dream of all mankind! Yeah, yeah, yeah! A thing no home can afford to be without! Yeah, yeah! yeah. And you know what it is? No! no. An atomic-powered corkscrew! An, An atomic-powered atomic corkscrew? Gladdens the heart, doesn't it? <laughs> Excuse me, I just come all over gulpy at the idea. And Waldo set to work to design an atomic-powered corkscrew. Hoppity, here's a list of materials to get. Flossmore, here's a blueprint to build it by. Uh, gee, is that about the size of it, Waldo? Of course not, Apple. Stay in the plan is drawn one foot to the inch. A uh, foot to the inch. The foot to the inch. Uh, I thought this was your project, Uncle Waldo. It is, it is, but it's such fun. I hate to keep it all to myself. Let's see, three pieces of wood, two springs, one piece of tin, one small atomic power plant. Well, that's easy enough. And within a short time, Hoppity had collected the necessary material. The wood he got from lumberyard scraps. The springs he got from an old bed. The tin he got from cans on the city dump. And the small atomic power plant he got by... This portion of Hoppity Hooper has been deleted in the interests of national security by the Nuclear Control Commission, whose policy, as always, is that's for us to know and for you to find out. How's it going, Fillmore? Uh, okay, uh, one foot equals one inch. One foot equals one inch. Ow, my foot! Uh, one inch equals one foot. Uh, one inch equals one foot. Then one fateful day a week later... Uh, it's finished, Waldo! About time, bring it out. I can't. Why? It won't fit through the door. That's impossible. I built it like you said. The one inch here equals one foot there. Fillmore, that thing's as big as a house. Uh, bigger? You bird brain, how can anybody use a corkscrew that big? Uh, don't worry, I also built a cork to match it. Does it work, Fillmore? No, no! Too late, the huge corkscrew began to turn. Right down through the floor of the workshop. And we can't turn it off! In a remarkably short time, Waldo's gadget had screwed itself down and out of sight in the ground. Uh, well, there it goes. And there goes the gadget contest with it. That's the least of our problems, Uncle Waldo. Huh? Look there! Oh, great day in the Doris. Well, what can it be that has driven the roses from Waldo's cheeks? 
We'll find out next time in The Whole Truth or I'll Dig You Later. Well, in our last episode, Waldo Wigglesworth's attempt to win a gadget contest came to grief when Fillmore made a slight error in the plan. And it says right there, Waldo, one foot equals one inch. You bugle brain, that's one inch equals one foot. As a result, Fillmore constructed an atomic-powered corkscrew two stories high. It didn't stay that high for long. Uh-oh, I can't turn it off. In a few seconds, the enormous corkscrew had drilled itself out of sight in the ground. Then, suddenly... Great Gadfrey Moat! We've struck water! Hey, you know what we've got here, fellas? An upside-down shower! An indoor swimming pool! No, a workshop with no roof on it! The water rose... <clears throat> The water rose rapidly, and soon our friends were compelled to paddle for their lives. Open the door, Hoppity! Uh, I can't reach the knob now, Uncle Waldo. Fortunately, somebody happened along at that moment. Who's there? Meter reader. Meter reader who? The gas company wants me to read a meter here. What is it doing? Come in! Come in! luck would have it, the wave washed our friends right up to the doorway of the man most likely to succeed in helping them. J. Roscoe Hoppin' Climber D-Z-Z-Y. What does dizzy mean, Uncle Waldo? Not dizzy, little flatfoot. Dizzy Z Y. It's my degree from the University of Hohenleber in West Germany. What does it mean? It means doctor of scientific stuff, you all. You all? Kuhn Labor is in southwest Germany. Oh. And the good doctor accompanied them back to the scene of the cro uh, accident. Hey, that's not water anymore. That's steam. Steam from a hole in the ground. Uh, is that what they mean by hot diggity? Gentlemen, I got it bad news for you. You mean we got trouble? Before you had trouble. Now you got a mess. Look here. And the doctor explained the ghastly facts of life to our friends. You see, this is the world. This part is dirt, this part is maybe water, this part is solid rock but red hot, and this part is molten rock. Did I heard Elvis Pretzel sing that one. Oh, that's a moldy rock, rock, rock. Oh, that's a moldy, moldy Not rock. Not moldy, moldy. He means it's so hot the rock is melted. Now, you got an atomic-powered corkscrew going down here like this. And I won't stop. First it throws out dirt, then it throws out water, then steam, then rocks, then melted rocks, and you know what you got? A volcano! Yeah, also a terrible mess. The doctor finished his explanation just in time, for at that instant... Look out for the hot rock! That one's red hot, Uncle Waldo! Run, Fensmuir! If that thing touches you, you'll be frigazied! Fortunately for the slow-moving bear, he fell into a ditch. And the red-hot boulder passed harmlessly over him. Fillmore was safe. Wrong! He's out! Well, the volcano continued to grow and grow. Step right up, folks. See nature's greatest fireworks display. Mount Waldo eruption daily at 2 and 5. That your volcano, bub? It's named after me, sir. You owe me $10,000. Whatever for? It just pushed over my barn. Oh, Hoppity, here's someone to see you about your volcano. And the man was right, too. For as the volcano got bigger, it spread out further and further, knocking down trees. Ooh. Barns, schoolhouses. Hooray! 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 Oh, where will it all end? Where will it all end? Well, today it ends right about here. But tune in next time for How to Stuff a Volcano or Lava Come Back to Me. Well, Waldo Wigglesworth designed an atomic powered corkscrew. Right! And Fillmore the Bear built it. Hey, wrong. And Hoppity Hooper turned it on. And that's when the trouble started. 
The corkscrew dug down so deep that it hit molten lava. And as a result, our heroes have a volcano on their hands. Oh! Well, not exactly on their hands. At first, Waldo was delighted. Step right up and see Mount Waldo growing right before your very eyes. Only 25 cents, the fourth part of a dollar. But he soon found out that owning a volcano had its problems. Look here, your volcano's knocked my TV antenna down. Well, that's not so bad. No, my house is under it. Stand back, I say. You're trespassing. Anything I can't stand, it's a pushy mountain. Oh! Wigglesworth, I'm gonna give you one day to put that thing out, or I'm gonna put you in. But, Sheriff, we haven't broken any laws. No, look at there. No smoking. Maybe he's right, Uncle Wallow. This thing is getting out of hand. Out of hand? It's getting out of the county. Hey, but how do we turn it off? That's your problem. Yeah, I had the funniest feeling you'd say that. Hey, why don't we ask Dr. Hoffman Climber? Good idea. So our friends went to see the famous scientist. Doctor, we have a question to ask you. You want to know how to turn the volcano off? Yeah, but how did you know? I was just watching the first part of the episode. Well, what's the answer? Uh, he hasn't seen the end of the episode yet, Hoppity. Well, offhand, I would say you need to put a cork in it. You see? Ask a foolish question, you get a foolish answer. No, wait a minute. Fillmore, do you remember when you were making that atom powered corkscrew a couple of episodes ago? Uh, let me flash back a minute. Says, oh, yeah, Waldo said, Yo, bird brain, how can anybody use a corkscrew that big? Says, and I said, hey, don't worry, I also built a cork to match it. Says, yeah, now I remember. Well, we'll plug up our volcano with that cork. You know something? If frogs had shoulders, you'd have a pretty good head on yours. Within a short time, our friends were approaching the Foggy Bog Airport and Foggy Bog's only aviator, the intrepid World War I pilot, Curtis Wrong. Well, how's about it, Ace? You want to fly this big mission? You want me to fly over a volcano, dive down on the top of it, and drop a cork into it? That's it, sport. What do you say? Hmm. I say you're out of your wing-walking mind. No bombs away, huh? No, bombs away is more like it. Get out of here. But at that moment... <laughs> Stop. Somebody is taking off in Curtis Wrong's aeroplane. And he's got the cork with him. Who can it be? Well, let's count noses. One, two, three. That leaves us one shot. And maybe you ought to count you as twice, Waldo. Bill Bob, that's Hoppity Hooper in that plane. I should have known. By Nettie Bingo, it was, too. Our hero was at the controls of Curtis Wrong's ancient biplane, struggling for altitude. Now, uh, there's something you don't see every day, Chauncey. What's that, Edgar? Hoppity Hooper in an airplane flying down the middle of Main Street. That is odd, Edgar. I told you. He usually takes the bus. Ooh, it's murder to send a mere boy up in a crate like that. Uh, he's not really a boy. They're more of a frog. Oh. Well, in that case, I don't have any dialogue to fit the occasion, except... Except what? I wonder what he's flying on. Huh? Because that plane didn't have any gas in the tank. Funny Curtis should say that, for Hoppity had just at that moment found it out. Hey, I must be on a... Well, is our hero doomed to destruction in the fiery maw of the volcano? Don't miss our next episode. The more, the merrier, or Hoppity drops in. In the gallant effort to cork up Mount Waldo, Wisconsin's only active volcano, Hoppity Hooper took off in a battered biplane belonging to Curtis Raw. That's funny. You gay says there's no gas in the tank, and yet here I... I can't look, Frisbee. I just can't look. Then why are you peeking through your fingers? Well, I don't want to miss anything. Tower to frog, tower to frog, pull back on the stick. Okay, well, I got the rules. Hoppity soon found out. But when he tried to pull his dilapidated aircraft out of the dive... Two horny toads. 
Yes, Hoppity was left high in the air with nothing but his bucket seat, his top wing, and his raw courage. Guess which one I'll lose first. Below him, the rest of the plane and the enormous core hurtled down toward the maw of the volcano. And, by a fortuitous circumstance, unknown outside of television cartoons, hit dead center. Hooray! But where's Hoppity? Uh, he's still hanging around up there. Yes, far above them, Hoppity Hooper was actually maneuvering the remaining wing of the plane like a makeshift glider balancing skillfully on the currents of air, effortlessly taking advantage of every updraft with the consummate art of the born aeronaut until with delicate grace he alighted upon the surface of the cork like a feather. Well, in one piece anyway. But all was not yet won, for the cork appeared ready to blow out again at any moment. And if it goes, it means the end of our hoppity. Even worse, it means the end of our whole series. We'll have to earn an honest living. There's only one thing to do. We end the episode and think of something before next time. No, we use your bugle. Okay. Finster, tell me, what is Hoppity's favorite toe-tapping music? Uh, well, let me see. Uh, he kind of likes the bunny hop, and he's partial to uh, Ship the Maru, uh, but I guess his real fave is the Foggy Bog Jump. Then play it, Big Bar! The name is Fillmore! Play already! <laughs> As the distant strains of the Foggy Bog Jump reached Hoppity's ears, his toes began to tap uncontrollably. Gee, that really makes you want to hop music. And Hoppity did. Oh, do you know? Oh, ricky, 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 doo, doo, doo. Hey, hey, hey. Of course, the more Hoppity hopped, the tighter the cork was wedged into the top of Mount Waldo. Soon, there wasn't even a trickle of smoke from the volcano. And after 73 choruses, Hoppity hopped down unscathed to join his friends. Uh, you're just in time, Hoppity. How come? I just lost my lip. That leaves us with just two problems. How to replace my airplane. And how to make sure that cork doesn't come out again. Hey, how about... And like so many of Hoppity's whispered plans, this one was a huge success. From that time on, every Friday night was stomp night on Mount Waldo. A rip and tear with Phil Moore Bear. Every Friday night, the dance mad younger set of Foggy Bog drove the cork more tightly into the top of the volcano. Of course, all the proceeds went to Curtis Wrong, who proceeded to build himself an enormous airplane. Yes, sir! It's a 72 passenger spad with movies, free meals. But it doesn't have any engine. It can't fly. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to go anywhere? Well, we do. Uh, where are we going, Hoppity? Where else, Fillmore? Hand in hand, hand, hand into, into the, the sunset. sunset. And what's more, they'll be gone until next time, when we will see the dawn of another of the adventures of Hoppity Hooper. <laughs> Our story opens today at the traveling emporium of Professor Waldo Wigglesworth, who at the moment seems to be pushing a new product. 
Here it is, ladies, the eighth wonder of the cosmetic universe. A skin pack guaranteed to remove wrinkles, warts, unwanted hair, freckles, and double chins, even triple chins. It's Pacaderm. Just apply Pacaderm in the jumbo size. Who's first for a demonstration? <laughs> I'll try it, Professor. Well, it's the wife of our beloved sheriff. Madam, you've really set us a task. To make you more beautiful than you are will be difficult indeed. You really like my face? I can truthfully say I've never seen anything like it. Very well, Dr. Feldspar, will you prepare the Pachyderm treatment? Uh, right away, Professor. Pachyderm? Fillmore, I thought we were selling Indian Guide Elixir. Uh, it's the same stuff, Harpity. I just add this flower to it to thicken it up a little, like this. Then I put on a new label, see? Pachyderm. Do you think that's ethical? No, no, I think it's pretty messy. So here you are, Professor. And uh, now, lovely lady, let us put Pachyderm to the test. Uh -huh. Fear not, madam. The pack lifts off neatly in a few moments, revealing a lovelier, younger you. Uh -huh. But if you just add flour and water, you get uh-oh. They're not uh-oh, Hoppity. Pachyderm. But, Fillmore, you didn't add flour. Yes, I did. See, it says here, Pure sifted cement. The cement! Oh, boy. Hey, Uncle Waldo! Uncle Waldo! Get away, boy, you bother me. And now, madam, are you ready for the great unveiling? Ah. Very well. ta -da! What's this? I tried to tell you, Fillmore mixed the face cream with cement. Great gobs of goo! Yeah, isn't it? Oh, this is awful. One moment, madam, and you'll be free. If we wait more than a couple of moments, we won't be. How's that, Fillmore? Hey, look who's coming. It's the sheriff. And that's his wife under that cement. All right, move along, you people. Hey, what are you scallywags doing? Just a little scientific experiment, sheriff. And what's that? Uh, this is my cousin, Ermintrude Pickelheimer. Ah. Just over from the old country, doesn't speak English very well. Looks kind of familiar. Now, where have I seen that dumpy-looking figure and those big flat feet? That was more than the sheriff's wife could stand. She swung blindly at the sheriff and pitched off the platform. Hey, what's happening to her face? She's just cracking a little smile, sheriff. Looks like she's cracking up. And with that, the hardened cement fell from the lady's face. Unfortunately, taking her eyebrows with it. Bernice, it's you! Let's get out of here. Why don't we take the truck, Uncle Waldo? Because I don't want to be slowed down. Charge! <laughs> and our friends went lickety-split down the road, followed by the sheriff. Is he still following us, Hoppity? Following? He's gaining on us. He can't be. We just passed the county line. So did he. Yes, and the sheriff had good reason for his speed. He was pursued by his furious wife. Big flat feet, huh? Uh, let's turn off here and fool him. I wouldn't if I were you. Uh, how come? Look at that sign. Oh, yeah. Uh, what does it say? It says, hoot and holler, keep out. Keep out? With that poor man's Elliot Ness baying at our heels, this is no time to worry about trifles. Come on. Not exactly a trifle we got to worry about, Uncle Waldo. It's a giant. A giant? Yep, the giant of Foot and Holler. Don't be ridiculous, Hoppity. Giants are merely mythological manifestations of primitive folk fears. I think you better explain that, Waldo. Too many big words for you, Nicodemus. Oh, I understand it all right. I thought you might explain it to him. Yike! Oh, my sainted Aunt Agnes McGee. There really is a giant of Hoot and Holler. And he's enormous. Don't miss our next episode, Tree Top Tall, or Things Are Looking Up. <laughs>
our last episode, our friends really hit the big time. For they unexpectedly met up with the giant of Hooten Holler. Uh, he's the large economy size, all right. Great snakes, listen to that voice, Manfred. Shh, I don't think he knows we're here yet. Let's tippy-toe away. Tippy-toe it is, Hoppity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fillmore, what did you blow that thing for? Uh, because you are standing on my feet. Foot. Do you realize what you've done, Bainbridge? Yeah, I got you off of my foot. You also drew the giant's attention to us. Her? Mm. Uh-oh, he spotted us. Let's get out of here. Well, heaven knows they tried. But when Fillmore started to run, he tripped over Waldo's cave. Now, when Waldo started to run, he tripped over Fillmore. But just as a giant hand reached down to grab them, Hoppity Hooper bounced into the sea. You can't catch me! You can't catch me! Mmm! And Hoppity dodged nimbly about as an enormous thumb and forefinger tried to pick him up. Let's get out of here, Fillmore. Hey, now wait! Wait, Waldo! Put me down, will you? I'm wasting all this footwork. Yeah, but we can't run off and leave Hoppity. We could make the effort. Yeah, but think of all the boys and girls watching this show. This is no time to worry about ratings. Yeah, what would all them kids out there think of you if you ran away and left Hoppity with a giant? They'd think... They'd think I was a cowardly fink. Sure they would. And they'd be right. I know you don't, Waldo. We're going back to save Hoppity. Very well. Forward. Meanwhile, back at the giant. Boy, am I ever getting tired. Just a little too tired, for at that moment... Hmm. The giant got Hoppity. Stay, Violet! Oh! Cease and desist, you mountainous mound of belligerent blubber, or you'll have to reckon with Professor Waldo Wigglesworth. Huh? And company. Hey, come on, put him up, put him up. Then fight like a bear, won't you? Step over that line, I dare you. Oh, he's on my foot. Turn it off, Fillmore. Oh, yes, for heaven's sakes, turn it off. I can't stand it. I'm free, let's go! Wait a minute, did you hear what I heard? Hey, you mean this? <laughs> no, not that. Please don't blow that thing again. That! Does that sound like the voice of a big, ferocious monster to you? No, I guess not. Hey, Shorty, are you a big, ferocious monster? Well, no. In actuality, I'm just a big, lovable monster. But nobody ever stays around long enough to find out. You're not ferocious at all? Oh, heaven knows I've tried. I've really tried. I'm just not the type, I guess. Then how come you grab me? Well, I just can't stand little things hopping or buzzing or flitting around me. They drive me crazy. Oh, I'm sorry. Loud noises set my teeth on edge, too. Gee, yeah, I'm sorry. Hey, then we're free to go? Oh, by all means. If you'll take them with you. Well, let's... Uncle Waldo, what is it? Hold it. Hold it. It's coming now. Oh, for the land's sake, what is it? Shh. He's getting an idea. This is it. We're rich. Yeah, we are. Well, practically, gentlemen, you see before you in this little gathering of four people, the world's greatest basketball team. Basketball? But that takes five people. With a center as big as this one, who needs five? Gentlemen, welcome to our new basketball team, the Dribblers Five Minus One. The, the Dribblers, Dribblers Five Minus One? one? Oh, don't miss our next athletic episode. The game's the same, or higher sport. <laughs>
time around, our friends had met the giant of Hoot and Holler and found him to be the gentlest of creatures. Unless he happens to step on you, of course. Then he squashes you. But gently. Now, here's my plan. We'll form a basketball team, just the four of us. How about, Mr., uh, what is your name? You can call me Tiny. Tiny? Tiny? Yes. All my brothers, they're bigger than I am. Hey, if we had his brothers, we could start a football team. Oh, they're already on a football team. They're linebackers for the Chicago Bears. Then now there's a team. Please, Egbert. Well, Mr. Tiny, how about joining our basketball team? Oh, I'd be delighted. Only... Only what? What's a basketball? Oh, for sweet Nellie's sake. And so retiring to a nearby clearing, Waldo had to teach the giant how to play the game. Now, the first thing you do is take the ball. Uncle and... Waldo, we don't have a basketball. Well, I got a yo-yo. It's not the same thing, Apple Red. Now, what do we use for... Hoppity, my boy. Huh? Hoppity, it's all up to you. To do what? Hoppity soon found out, for in a moment he found himself pressed into service as a basketball. That's it, Tiny. Keep him close to the ground. Bring it down the court. Make like a basketball regard. Okay, Professor. How's this? Ouch! What happened? I think he booted the ball, Waldo. My, that's smart. All right, let's try it again. So how do you like being a basketball? Uh -huh. It has its ups and downs. All right, Tiny, shoot! <coughs> Sensational, Tiny, you'll make Wilt the stilt wilt. There's just one problem, Uncle Waldo. Where are you going to find a pair of size 97 and a half basketball shoes? Where else? In a shoe store. But, mister, that's in my sign. I need those shoes. How much? Well, about the $50 ought to do it. Sold. Here are $5 in cash and $45 in tickets for the game tonight. Take it down, Marmaduke. They're right, Waldo. But the name is Fillmore. Get your tickets right here for the game of the century, folks. The Dribblers 5 minus 1 versus the Swamp City Beavers. Hurry, hurry, hurry. The game is about to start. This way, sir. Yours is the third seat over. Play ball! Pass it here! Pass it here! Well, what a game that was. The Swamp City Beavers were good, but every time they made a shot, Two-Ton Tiny would stick his finger up through the hoop, and the ball would bounce out. On the other hand... There you go, Fillmore! Okay! okay. <laughs> Fillmore, you can't dribble while blowing your bugle. I know, it makes it all soggy. Here, Tiny! Yay! When the game was over, Swamp City was swamped 102 to 2. I dropped one ball in the wrong basket. Well, from that moment on, the Dribblers 5 minus 1 were the new sensation of basketball. They beat every team in the country and soon became world champions. They even played the Harlem Globetrotters, with one hand tied behind them. They my bugle hand, too. Naturally, they were called on to make speeches. I owe my success in basketball to living clean, thinking straight, training hard, and being 32 feet tall. They even made commercials for television. Hey, Hoppity, are you still washing your gloves with that greasy kid stuff? Sure, they're kid gloves. Oh. I've used this razor blade 22 times, and it still works. But you don't shave. No, I use it for sharpening pencils. But then one morning, Waldo received a note that drove the roses from his cheeks. Hey, Dad, look at that, Hoppity. Weeping horny toads, what are we going to do? Well, I know what I'm going to do. And Waldo did it. He fainted. Well, what can be in that mysterious note? We'll find out next time in... Waldo the Weeper, or the Balls in the Other Court.
friends joined with Tutan Tiny, the giant of Hooten Holler, to form a basketball team called the Dribblers 5 minus 1, and soon soared to the top of the basketball ratings. But at the pinnacle of success, Waldo received a note which moved him strongly and horizontally. Uncle Waldo! Yeah, he's fainted, Hoppity! Let me see that note. It's from Tutan Tiny, and it says... I quit. Goodbye. Jumping Jenny Ren, this is serious. Oh, oh, Hoppity, I had the most awful dream. I dreamed that Tiny quit the team. That was no dream, Uncle Wallow. He did. But we've got a big game tonight. We're playing the All-Stars in a benefit. I mean, it's a worthy charity. It's where am I? Right behind the eight ball with the rest of us. But I wonder why Tiny's leaving us. Yeah, let's ask him. But why are you quitting, Tiny? I won't stay in a place where people sell other people. People sell people? Yes. Look at that. Giant sale. Big, big bargains. But that doesn't mean they sell giants, Tiny. They're not selling midgets. And how about that one? Giant clearance. Everything must go. I can take a hint. You mean? I'm going. The timid giant lumbered slowly out of town, leaving our friends in a quandary. Now, this ain't a quandary. It's a chili bar. Meanwhile, in the locker room of the All-Stars... Well, boys, my idea worked. That big lummox has left town. Now, remember, the only player they got is the frog. Concentrate on Hoppity. Yes, they'll concentrate on Hoppity, and let's face it, Fillmore, we are not very good players. Oh, I don't know. Listen to this. <laughs> Basketball players, I mean. Hey, but Waldo. Shut up and eat your beans, Tamerlane, and... Ooh. Ooh. Hey, what is it, Waldo? You got a hot enchilada? Move the plate, Fillmore. He's getting an idea. I got it. What? what? Mexican jumping beans. The Mexican, Mexican jumping beans? Like those there. Now, ain't they kind of little to play basketball, Waldo? Yes, but you're not, Fillmore. Or miss, a large bowl of jumping beans for my friend. Si, senor, right away. Now, Waldo, I don't think... I know, and it's just as well. Keep your fingers crossed, boys. I can't, Waldo. Why not? I keep dropping my fork. Under Waldo's watchful eye, Fillmore devoured a huge bowl of Mexican jumping beans. How you feel, Fillmore? I uh, just... <clears throat> great. Then, in just a little while, it was game time. Whatever you do, Fillmore, stay under this basket. Uh, sure, Professor. Boy, those all-stars sure look tough. Well, the all-stars did concentrate on Hoppity, all five of them. Golly, I don't have a chance. Help! Here, Waldo! But, of course, Waldo missed the ball, and it bounced into the hands of a charging all-star. Down the court he went, stopped, shot for the basket, and then... Yes, Fillmore knocked the ball right back out of the basket. And from that moment on, no matter how carefully the all-stars aimed and shot, not one ball got through the hoop. That's what I call using your head, Fillmore. Uh, no, Hoppity. It's what I call <laughs> using the old bean. The score was 0-0 zero, zero with five seconds to go when a loose ball. Waldo picked it up, glanced at the charging all-stars. Ah! Terrified, he threw the ball into the air and it swished through the hoop just as the game ended. We win two to nothing. Yeah! Next day, by request, our friends were on their way back to Foggy Bog, Wisconsin. A lot of planes were flying that day, but there was no mistaking the one our boys were on. <coughs> you will tune in again soon for the further adventures of Hoppity Hooper, won't you? <coughs>
kids, there's one thing you can say about Waldo Wigglesworth. When he has money, he's really a sport. There's only one trouble. What's that? He's also a sport when he doesn't have money. Uncle Waldo, that's our last dollar you're lighting your cigar with. Well, what else can you do with a measly dollar these days? We could use it to pay some of our bills. Hoppity, we have more bills than two sessions of Congress. One measly buck isn't going to help. Look, Here's a notice from the mortgage company. If we don't pay them $100 by tomorrow night, they'll evict us right out of our truck. Well, there's only one way out. Of course, we skip town. No. We change our name. Nope. Uh, we starve. No, sir, we've got to go to work. <coughs> Bite your tongue, Hoppity Hooper. Yeah, but we got to do something. Oh, very well, but it does go against the grain. Hand me that newspaper, Fern Doc. Fillmore. Aha! Here is just the position. Ditch diggers wanted hard work, low pay, ten dollars a ton, bring your own shovel. That's, that's the, the job, job you're, you're going to take? take? No, that's the job you're going to take. And next morning, Fillmore and Hoppity were hard at work digging a ditch for the Foggy Bog Power Light and Fertilizer Company. <laughs> Oh, it does a man good to get out in the fresh air and watch somebody else work. We've got to dig a lot of dirt yet. We've only made ten dollars so far. We'll never make it. I could get a whip, fellas. But just then, as fate would have it, a small stone rolled off the pile of dirt at the top of the ditch and hit Fillmore in the head. It oh, doggone rock. Well, sir. That rock went hurtling out of the ditch and straight as an arrow for 400 yards, heading right for the first hole of the Foggy Bog Golf Course. <coughs> Did you see that, Hoppity? Yeah, it hit old Major Grigsby right in the head. More important, it landed within a foot of the pin. Hoppity, I feel an idea coming on. Would you like me to hold your hat? Uh, oh! <coughs> It's well, what's the idea? You're the idea, oh. Fremont. I am. Look there. Foggy Bog Open Golf Tournament. First prize, $1,000. Fillmore, you are going to be the Foggy Bog Ben Hogan, the Arnold Palmer of Prairie du Chien, the Bobby Jones of Pestigo. He's going to be a golfer? Going to be, he is. You are looking at the greatest power swinger since Babe Ruth. He was a baseball player. Whatever, come on. <laughs> And in just a little while, Fillmore was outfitted in the latest golf talk. Uh, on credit, of course. And entered in the Foggy Bog Open. <coughs> but standing on the first tee of the Foggy Bog Golf Course, Fillmore made a dreadful discovery. Uh, I can't hit the ball. You've got to, or we lose our happy home. Uh, this club is too small. Come on, Fillmore, back to the ditch. Uh, fuzzy buzz. Much to his surprise, Fillmore again knocks the ball 400 yards right to the first hole. Sorry, Major Grigsby. That's it, Hoppity. He has to use a shovel. This way. Now, Fillmore, just tap it in. Uh, can I move the ball one club length away from Major Grigsby? Play it as it lies. It's okay. <laughs> Saint of Agnes, what happened? That's your power swinger, Uncle Waldo. The only thing he can do is hit the ball 400 yards. Uh, and in front of all them spectators, too. Spectators nothing, Fillmore. Those are creditors. Uh, creditors? You've heard of Arnold's army? Yeah. That is Fillmore's fifth column. And Fillmore's fifth column moved forward menacingly, waving their subpoenas, court orders, and eviction notices. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. 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 well our friends have landed in a sandy bunker. Can they blast out of it? Don't miss our next episode, Divot Diggers or The Wearing of the Green. Well, Waldo Wigglesworth thought he was pulling a fast one when he entered Fillmore Bear in the Foggy Bog Open Golf Tournament. To be sure, using a shovel instead of a club, 
Fillmore was able to drive the ball a long way. 400 yards straight as an arrow. But when it came to putting, that was another story. No, it's the same story. 400 yards straight as an arrow. I don't know my own strength. What was worse, our boys were being tagged by an army of predators waving overdue bills. Hey, I got this. Oh, hold on, good people. Our only chance of paying you is for Fillmore to win this golf tournament. But he can't putt. Hey, nobody's perfect. Right, and there's only one way he can possibly win. Yeah, if all the other players drop dead. No, but you're getting warm. You mean... I sure am. Come on. Well, from that point on, it was Katie bar the door. Other players found themselves in unforeseen difficulties as Fillmore's fifth column infiltrated the tournament to make sure that their hero won. Four. On the other hand, Fillmore's fifth column had to make sure that he never had to hit anything except a long ball. A hole in one! Another hole in one! Well, let's just say I'm consistent. At the last hole, there wasn't much doubt about who would win. Ward 90, Hayward 89, Turner 88, Fillmore 26. Now, this hole is 575 yards, Fillmore. you got to really powder this one. After you get on the green, I think you've got it made. That was true. For Fillmore's fifth column had dug the last green into the shape of a huge funnel. Just one more, Fillmore. Swing your hardest. And Fillmore did. <coughs> he swung so hard that he spun all the way around. And around. And around. And around. 41, 42, 43. Stop, Fillmore! 58, 59, 60. When Fillmore finally ran down, he had run up a score of 152 and lost the tournament. <laughs> and my balance, too. This, of course, enraged Fillmore's disappointed supporters, and they started for him with intent to do him bodily harm. Not at all. We just want to give him a little present. Yeah! <laughs> a necktie! Come on, Senator, come on. Now hold it, good people, hold it! Here's your money! We can pay all of you what we owe you. What? What's that? Uncle Waldo, you're rich! Ah! Uh, the Waldo! Where'd you get all the happy cabbage? Cheesy, Fillmore. I bet against you, and the odds were unbelievable. You bet against Fillmore, even though he was making all those holes in one and had 50 people helping him? Hoppity, my boy, I knew that if there was any earthly way to louse up a sure thing, I could depend upon Fillmore to do it. Uh, gee, Waldo, that's very touching. It's nice to have friends who trust you. Well, old buddy, I always say, when it comes to the least, you're the most. Yeah, thanks. Hey, what do you always say, Hoppity? I always say, isn't this a living in? <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, it is. But be with us next time when we tee off for another of the adventures of Hoppity Hooper. <laughs>
Hoppity fans, the day had started out just like any other. But at exactly 10.30, a strange thing happened. Hey, hey, fellas, I just happened to think. Good heavens, that is strange. Hoppity, Fillmore is thinking. Good boy, Fillmore, what are you thinking about? It, it just hit me like a bolt out in a black. We haven't done our good deed for the day. Oh, that's right, and we did promise. Oh, well, what kind of a good deed do you think we ought to do, Fillmore? Uh, no, your head has done enough for one day, Fillmore. Rest easy. I've already thought of one. What's that? A good deed that has been a classic down through the ages, helping old ladies to cross the street. Hurrying off to the nearest busy street corner, our heroes immediately went to work. Here comes a little old lady now. Good morning, sweet little old lady. Have no fear. I shall help you cross the street. Your arm, my dear. You men are all alike. See a pretty face and it turns your head. God, I could have sworn that was a sweet little old lady. Here comes another one, Uncle Waldo. Waldo tried again. However... Masher! <laughs> They just don't make sweet little old ladies like they used to. But just as they were about to give up... Boys, could you help a miss in her twilight years cross the street? Prune skins and plum pits! We've got a live one! Come on, boys! Delighted down to the bottom of their socks, they helped the sweet little old lady across the busy street. Your dear sweet boys. Now I can go to the bank. We finally did it! It gives you a good feeling. They're right here. Hey, what's that? No, oh, relax, Hoppity. Probably just some car backfiring. But Waldo was wrong as race. Their sweet little old lady had just robbed the bank. Hey, looky. Here's our sweet little old lady again. Come on, Mother. We'll help you back across the street. Let go. I've got to make her get away. Good work, boys. You just captured Grandma Jessica. Grandma Jessica? Yeah, Grandma Jessica James, the bank robber. Read all about it. Frog, fox, and dumb bear capture bank robber. May I to give heroes reward? True, Grandma Jessica was now behind bars, but not for long. I can't keep Grandma Jessica James in stir. I'm cracking up tonight. That night, Grandma Jessica carried out her plan and made a clean getaway. The next morning, she made her way back to town with but one thought burning in her crooked little brain. First thing I'm gonna do is get even with these three young fellas for getting me captured. Meanwhile, at their hotel, and unaware that they were in danger, our three heroes were taking a bath. Hey, stop shoveling! Where's the soap? It's in my eyes. Why did we all have to take a bath together? Because there's only one tub and three of us. Hey, that's logic, Hoppity. At that moment, Grandma Jessica, disguised as a bellboy and carrying a mysterious package, arrived at their door. There's a bomb in this package with enough powder to blow those naughty boys sky high. See who that is, Fillmore. Hey, why me? Yeah, why not? Stuck for an answer, Fillmore went to the... Yes? Here's a package for you, sir. Oh, thank you. Now I suppose you want a tip? No, but I'll give you one. You better put your fingers in your ears, Sonny. Fillmore, why are you standing there with your fingers in your ears? Uh, the bellboy told me to. That's as good a reason as any, I guess. What's in the package? Uh, I don't know. I know a sure way to find out. See how? Let's open it up and take a look. Uh, I wish I'd thought of that. Our friends started to unwrap the package with a bomb inside, due to go off at any second. Five, four, three, two, one. Fire in the hole! Did Grandma Jessica rub them out? Will there be an episode two? Watch next time for Boom in the Room or Bomby Weather. As you remember, to get even with our boys for sending her to prison, Grandma Jessica James, the bank robber, gave them a package containing a time bomb. <laughs> In ten seconds, boom, and that'll be the end of them. You suppose it's a care package? Let's hope not. Uh, see what it is, Waldo. 
Oh, goody. It's a ball. A ticking ball. How clever. Try it out, Uncle Waldo. Okay. <laughs> Say, this one's keen. Uh, give it a toss. The bomb was due to explode any second when Waldo tossed it to Fillmore. Fortunately, Fillmore missed the catch, and it flew out an open window. Oh, darn my butterfingers that I missed. Certain that she had blown our heroes to smithereens, Grandma Jessica went on to more important things. I'm gonna organize a mob. I'll be Mr. Big of the Dirty Guy or Ladies. And getting to work, she contacted every crooked grandma in town. Three Dollar Billy. Poker Pearl, Machine Gun Nelly, and Babyface Bertha, to mention only a few. With her granny gang now gone, Grandma Jessica James launched one of the worst crime waves in the history of Tap City. This is a stick-up! Come now, Mother, you must be joking. Charlie! Yes, Mr. Gloomeyer. They're not joking. I noticed that. And so it went. All banks and most delicatessens were robbed at least twice a week. Though every man on the force was on the case, the police were unable to catch the granny gang. What's so hard about catching old ladies? Have you ever tried to catch an old lady? Not lately. These three boys caught Grandma Jessica single-handed. How did they do it? Beats me. They must have a knack with old ladies. Well, that's our answer. Bring them in and put them on the case. Great idea, Chief. We'll put them in charge of a special squad. The Granny Squad? We're on the Granny Squad? Hey, how are we going to capture the Granny Gang? I don't know, but we've at least got to try. Come on. <laughs> But the Granny Squad had gone less than a block when suddenly... Hey, hey, that's an old lady. You suppose she's part of the Granny Gang? Let's find out. Getting out of the car, they investigated. Hoist your hands. This is a stick-up. And taking Waldo's watch, the old lady made her getaway. Hey, she is one of the Granny Gang. That I figured out for myself. Look, she's going into that tea room. Have some more tea, Earl May? No, thank you, Jessica. But I might take a little brandy for my cold. <coughs> my, I think I feel a little cold coming on myself. All right, ladies, the jig's up. Mercy, I thought I rubbed you boys out. Hey, nope. And we're the granny squad, so you got to come with us. No granny squad is going to take us in. To your weapons, girls. No, ladies. Good heavens. Do something, Hoppity. What can I do? They're just a bunch of sweet old ladies and... No! Oh! 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 the car, girls. We'll make our getaway. They're getting away. I don't like having a knack with old ladies. It hurts. After them. And our heroes took off after the fleeing granny gang. How are we doing? They're gaming on us, Jessica. Well, we'll have to slow them down. Net and needles out, ladies. Net and needles away! The knitting needles were tossed into the street, and when the granny squad car ran over them, with the tires bristling with knitting needles, the car skidded out of control, onto an open drawbridge, and was headed for a drop into the icy East River. What's next time for The Big Splash or Bridge Over the River Cry? In our last episode, the Granny Gang had riddled the Granny Squad car tires with knitting needles. And it careened out of control onto an open drawbridge. Fillmore, watch where you're going. Yes, I am watching. And then it scares me to death. Hang on, we're going off into the river. But the drawbridge had opened for a reason, to let a garbage barge pass. And instead of crashing into the icy water of the East River, they fell into a huge pile of garbage. Their luck was holding. Luck, the man says. What kind of luck do you call this? Well, it fell than crashing into the river, Uncle Waldo. I am not so sure. Once back on shore, our heroes combed the garbage out of their hair and planned their next move to capture the elusive granny gang. <laughs> 
Uh, uh, I got an idea. I doubt it, but what? I'm desperate. Hey, let's set up a roadblock. And then when the granny gang comes roaring down the street, pow! Hey, hey, we got them. Hold it, Nazi. The bugle we don't need, but your idea does sound like an idea at that. Let's give it a try. Our heroes quickly threw up a roadblock, and no sooner had they finished when... Hey, here they come, right on cue. We'll stand right here in front of the barricade, so they'll have to stop. <whistles> stop in the name of the Granny Squad! Dead. Ouch! The Nellie's nighty, they didn't even slow down. They must be on their way to rob more banks, and that gives me an idea. Dead, I hope it's better than the one I had. Let's each hide out in a different bank. And when they show up to rob it, we grab them, right? Right! That way, one of us is bound to capture him. At least the first part of Hoppy's plan worked like a charm. But when the granny gang came into the first bank, Waldo was on hand to catch them red-handed. Oh, I've got you! Now you're all under arrest. Look, girls, it's that unconscious young man from the granny squad. Unconscious? I'm not unconscious. Leaving the unconscious Waldo, Grandma Jessica and her gang went on to the next bank, where Hoppity was waiting to apprehend them. Don't anybody move. I've got you surrounded. Mercy, those granny squad boys are certainly a nuisance. Oh! And once again, they made a clean getaway. You too, eh, Hoppity? I didn't have a chance. Grandma Jessica was too fast on the drawstring. I wonder how Fillmore made out. Hey, hey, fellas! Hey, I did it! I did it! <laughs> Fillmore, calm down. Stop blowing your bugle. But I did it. I captured the granny gang. You what? Said, instead of hiding inside the bank, I hid outside the bank. Said, and when they were inside the bank, I locked the door outside the bank. Said, and now I'm outside the bank. And said, I did. Said, Am I making any sense? You're telling us that you've got the granny gang locked in the bank. Said, That's it. How'd you know? You call it a lucky guess. Good boy, Fillmore. We've got him at last. Come on. And when they got to the bank, sure enough, they found the old lady safely locked inside. Well, ladies, it's been a tough fight, but now we've got you. Stop shouting, young man. You made me drop a stitch. It isn't like them to give up without a fight, Uncle Walter. We better watch out for a trick. Nonsense. They know when they've had enough. Hey, but do we? There, we're all finished. Well, that's pretty fancy knitting, girls. What are they? A little something for you boys. Sweater? They don't look like any sweaters I ever saw. I never look a gift sweater in the mouth, I always say. Let's try them on. Hoppity's ears were correct, but when they put the sweaters on... <laughs> oh, uh, mine's a little tight under the Adam's apple. I can't move. And I can't get mine off. Good grief and guppy gravy. They've knitted a straight jacket. And now we're going to take you naughty boys for a nice ride, aren't we, Cora? Oh, yes. And we'll have to hurry or they'll miss their train. Uh, train? We're not going to catch a train. Wrong again, Waldo. You are about to catch a train. The hard way. So if you are brave enough to watch, be with us next time for On the Wrong Track or The Big Wheel. In our last episode, the Granny Gang had taken our boys for a ride. And in order to get rid of them, tied them to a railroad track. Now, this is a fine kettle of sardines. What could be worse? It, it could be worse if a train was coming. It's me and my big mouth. We're goners, boys. Nothing can save us now. Don't give up yet, Waldo. We're not too far away. Sheriff, you cannot close this place. I just did. Alas. With the play closed, I will have no one to save. And I must save somebody every day. It's in my blood. Just then, Clyde Wrinkle better heard the train whistle and... Ah, a train cometh. Some unfortunates are tied to the track. I must save them. Have no fear. I am here. Who are you? Clyde Wrinkle better. Hero. A hero? What luck? Yes, and I have come to save you, Nell. Quick, untie us. I shall, Nell. Stop calling me Nell and hurry. The train is coming. It's going to be too late. The train is here. But at the last second, Clyde Wrinklebetter snatched our friends to safety. Phew, that was a 
Sherlock calls one. Oh, uh, Clyde, me boy, we don't know how to thank you. Tut, tut, no need. It was my pleasure. Farewell, Nell. <laughs> don't call me Nell. The granny gang almost got us that time. What are we going to do now? Let's head for that old deserted farmhouse up on the hill. Our wet heroes ran for the farmhouse. But when they got inside, a strange sight met their eyes. Wow, look at that lovely loot. Yeah, somebody must have robbed a bank or something. Fillmore! That don't look at me. I didn't do it. You hit the nail on the head. All of this money, and look at this picture. It's Grandma Jessica. Hey, then look at this. Hideout, sweet hideout. What luck. We stumbled into the granny gang hideout. That's all. Let's get out of here. Wait, here's something else. These pin-up pictures on the wall. The pin-up pictures? They look more like a bunch of old-timers to me. Right. And I just figured out why we haven't been able to capture the granny gang. They're, they're too tough for it. No, we're too young to capture old ladies. With a new plan burning in Hoppity's mind, they picked up another granny squad car and rushed to the YMCFMOE. Now, wait just a darn minute. What's the YMCFMOE? It's a young man's club for men over 80. Wasting no time, Hoppity deputized 10 of the club's best old men into the granny squad. Count off. One, two, three, four, <coughs> four. <coughs> no, easy, boy. Four. Hoppity's new granny squad was ready. Now we go back to the hideout, and when the granny gang shows up, we'll lay be surprised. Hey, so will I. I haven't the slightest idea what's going on. That night, when the granny gang returned to the hideout... Stick them up. You're all <laughs> under arrest. Oh! 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 What handsome young gentleman. <laughs> what's your name, young man? The name's Homer. Homer, my, what a nice name. I just love a boy with curly hair. My name's Bertha, honey. You're the strong, silent type, aren't you? What are you gentlemen doing here? We're <coughs> on the granny squad. Yes, and we've come to take you girls to jail. Any questions? Gracious, no! We'd love to go with you boys, wouldn't we, ladies? Oh, oh, new granny squad had done the trick, and the granny gang went to jail for 50 years. Well, that does it. But sending those sweet old ladies to jail for 50 years isn't exactly what I'd call a happy ending. Oh, yes, it is, Sonny. 50 years isn't forever, and when we get out, our new gentleman friends will be waiting to take his cart. Woo woo! With that, woo woo! Happy thought. We say, be sure to watch for another happy ending in the true adventures of Hoppity Hooper. <laughs> opens today in the little village of Ware. Ware is just like any other village, except for one thing. It's haunted. <laughs> and wouldn't you know it, that's just the place that Hoppity Hooper and his two companions got a flat tire. Actually, we didn't get a flat tire. Our truck did. Well, not the truck, really. Just one of the wheels. Oh, excuse me. Well, that's all right. Oh, anyone can make a mistake. I think nothing of it. Let's get on with our story, shall we? 
Our heroes had a flat. And what's more, we don't have a spare tire. We'll have to get this one repaired in town. Dad, I don't like the looks of that town, Waldo. Now, what's the name of it? Uh, what's it say on the signpost? Dad, where? Right in front of you, bird brain. The name is Fillmore. I know, but what's the name of the town? No, 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 not what, where? I got a funny feeling I've heard this routine before. Where? That's it, Waldo. Why? The not what, where? Who's on first? But while our friends continued this snappy but outdated patter, <clears throat> their flat tire slowly and mysteriously began to roll downhill. Hey, there goes our tire rolling toward the village. What? Where? Never mind, after it. And away our three friends galloped after the runaway tire. In a few minutes, they found themselves in the town square of Ware. Boy, this place is kind of creepy. Uh, yeah. And that sure a funny-looking statue in the middle of the square. Come on, that's not a statue. That's a gallows. And that's no bluebird of happiness on top of it, either. Let's get this thing fixed and get out of here. There's a garage, Uncle Waldo. Oh, yes. I say, my good man, and I use the term loosely, can you repair a tire for us? Uh, this one's a goner. You certainly are. No, not us. He met the tire here. Hey, hey, boy, what a spook. Whom, may I ask, are you calling a spook? Uh, I didn't think he heard me. The idea of calling me a spook. I never heard of such a thing. It's slander, that's what it is. Rank slander. I should sue. The, the great gully whoppers. Look at that. B -b Pull yourself together, old man. We didn't mean anything. Very well, then. Uh, how long will it take to fix our tire? Oh, I don't know. Perhaps a long, long time. Well, that means we'll have to spend the night here. I don't think I'd really like it here. Nonsense. Lots of people who have spent one night here have decided to stay permanently. Uh, the who, for instance? There's some of them out there now. Hey, that does it. I'm hitchhiking to the next town. In the dark? It's not dark yet. But darkness falls quite quickly here. <laughs> See? The gee, it's black as a hat already. Well, I guess you'll just have to spend the night in our hotel. How do we get there? I'll drive you over in my pickup truck. Pickup truck? That's a hearse! I didn't say what it picked out. And with chattering teeth, our friends climbed into the somber black hearse for a ride to the hotel. I didn't think I'd ever take but one ride in one of these. You may still be right. Gee, that's a bad knock you've got in the engine there. That's not the engine hop, but those are my knees. All too soon, the mysterious garage man deposited them in front of a sagging, weather-beaten old house. This is the hotel? It looks like the Death Valley Hilton. Somebody's opening the door. But well, nobody's there. I wish it was me. Hey, I just thought of something. Do you know what night this is? Uh, don't tell me. It's, it's Halloween. Yes, a night full of ghosts, goblins, spooks, and banshees. What's a banshee, Fillmore? I don't know. I stopped listening when he said ghosts. And just then, a bony hand emerged from the dark doorway and beckoned our friends to enter. Will they? And if so, why? Don't miss our next episode, The Witch of Ware or The Flying Sorceress. <laughs> Last time, our heroes had arrived at a hotel in the haunted village of Ware. Well, let's go in. We can't stay out here. It's gonna rain. I'd rather be soaked than croaked. Come on, Fillmore. Where's your spirit? I know where mine is. It's all them others I'm worried about. Nevertheless, our friends entered the gloomy hotel lobby and cautiously approached the desk. Looks like nobody's here. Hey, that's a hopeful sign. Ring the bell, Uncle Waldo. Good evening. You gong? Why, yes, we'd like a room for the night. Very well. Sign the register. Well, that's funny. This is red ink. Yes, yes. Sign quickly before it clots. How much of the room? One dollar a night. What's the weekly rate? I wouldn't know. Nobody's ever stayed more than one night. I can see why. You can get your key from the bellboy. Pleasant dreams. <laughs> If you want to bet. Then, as our heroes approached the bellboy... 
Wow, look at that! Uh, he looks a mite peaked, don't he? Well, the tips must be terrible here. Get the keys, Phil Moore. Uh, okay. Gee, it's a funny shape. What kind of a key do you suppose it is? Stay all together now. A, a skeleton, skeleton key! key. Not very funny, Fillmore. And I don't know. It, it sure broke him up. Come on. In a little while, our heroes... Heroes? The terrified trio then were huddled in a huge, clammy four-poster bed. Well, let's get some sleep. But no sooner had they closed their eyes than... <laughs> <laughs> Sweet Lily in the Valley, what's that? I'll find out. Hey, Mr. Clerk, what's all that racket? Now, what seems to be the trouble? Yeah, gee, Waldo, that was amazing. Yes, that's what I call quick service. We want to know what all the racket is downstairs. Oh, I'm sorry if you have been disturbed. It's just a little Halloween party. A party, oh boy, free food. Yeah, can the orchestra use a bugler? You are cordially invited, of course. Well, that's nice of you. I don't know, Uncle Waldo. Some pretty creepy things have been happening around here. Tut, tut, my boy. We're all a bit tired. That's all. Nothing like a little cider and ginger snaps to buck you up, though, is there? Now, what do we use for costumes? Well, with the help of the night clerk, our friends set <laughs> themselves up in Halloween costumes. Hoppity put a pumpkin on his head and went as a jack-o'-lantern. Fillmore used a clean sheet off the bed and went as a white ghost. Hey, not such a clean sheet. I'm going as a tattletale gray ghost. And Waldo went to the devil. That's as the devil. Oh, sorry. Well, the clerk led them to the cobweb-covered ballroom where the activities were in full swing. <laughs> Costumes, there's witches and gobblers and spooks. Why, they certainly are a lively bunch. Yeah, and it must be almost midnight. It's exactly midnight. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to unmask. Okay, but we just got here. Don't be a drag, Fillmore. Besides, we can still have our cider and ginger snaps unmasked. Surprise, surprise, it's me. Surprise, I'm really a frog. And I'm a bear. And you're a... You're a witch. And, and you're a ghost. Yes, with a thrill of horror, our boys realized that the others in the room weren't wearing masks at all. They're really witches, ghosts, and goblins. Let's get out of here. Welcome, gentlemen, to the annual convention of the H-O-O-H-A-S. The who -Hoss? The horrible order of haunts and spooks. who is right. Come on, they can't keep us here. No. Stop. Oh. Hey, now. Hey, somebody must have dropped their gum. No, gentlemen. You are now under my spell. <laughs> Yikes. For more hearty laughter, see our next episode, Some Enchanted Evening, or Voodoo Something to Me. <laughs> Last time, you remember, our friends found themselves unwilling guests at a spooks convention. The meeting will please come to disorder. <laughs> now, I suppose you all know our plan for tonight. <laughs> good, good. We don't know it. Yet I don't want to know it. Well, you see, we spooks and specters have only one night to howl each year. Dude, is that why they call it Halloween? Oh, you are going to get yours, fat boy. <laughs> Yes, on Halloween, we get to ride our broomsticks, turn into bats, and roam the countryside playing mean tricks on everybody. It's a ghostly guess. But then what happens? In the morning, as soon as the rooster crows, we all have to disappear for another year. But this year, this year will be different. <laughs> Why? What are you going to do? This year, we are going to silence every rooster in the world. And if the roosters don't crow, it will be Halloween all year long. <laughs> oh, that's awful. Can't you see it, Hoppity? Yeah. Every house in the country will be haunted. It's a regular ghost-to-ghost -ghost network. And all the trash cans will be upset. Okay, not to mention the people who own them. And worst of all, it'll always be October. We'll never get around to Christmas again. Yes, that's the beauty part. <laughs> Take them away. <laughs>
In no time at all, our friends found themselves in a small cell in the basement. Don't worry, there's only one guard at the door. Well, then he's just a itty bitty shrimp. Say, fella, what would you do if all three of us just decided to walk out of here? Oh, I hope you wouldn't do that. I'd get terribly upset. What a pigeon. And when I get upset, I turn into a ravening, bloodthirsty werewolf! You know, for a pigeon, he's got remarkably large teeth. Meanwhile, the horrible order of haunts and spooks were carrying out their fiendish plan to silence all the roosters in the world. The ghosts blew icy drafts through chicken coops. This gave the roosters laryngitis and they couldn't crow a note. The witches simply cast spells on the poor birds. Kazam, as we say. <laughs> so instead of crowing, they went... Meh. Or... Meh. Or even... Racing with the moon, high up in the midnight blue. <laughs> the specters had more direct means of silencing the feathered alarm clocks. Uh, it says free chicken dinners. Where's the chicken? <laughs> Meanwhile, back in the small cell, our heroes were trying to devise some means of escape. Chicken Inspector! Pay no attention, Uncle Wallow. I've got an idea. What is it? Music has charms to soothe the savage beast. A stitch in time saves nine, too. Well, don't you understand? Maybe if Fillmore plays his bugle, it'll put the werewolf to sleep. It's worth a try. Play, Fensdorp. <laughs> Sure enough, the music did have an effect on the werewolf. He turned back into a mild little man again. Say, do you know melancholy baby? Say, if you hum it through once, I'll fake it. All right. Do 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 do. My, you have a lovely voice. Do, oh, thank you. Do 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 do. Quick, this way. What a break. You know, I just thought of something, Uncle Wallo. Mm. That old saying is, music has charms to soothe the savage breast, not beast. You mean it's not supposed to work on beasts? Well, not according to the old saying. Oh, that is upsetting. And the restored werewolf lunged at our heroes. You know, Hoppity, sometimes I wish you didn't have a classical education. Will our boys escape the jaws of the werewolf? See our next chapter, Down in the Mouth or Fangs a Million. You know, there's just nothing more ornery than an irritated werewolf, as our friends are finding out firsthand. Faster, faster, he's gaining! You wouldn't believe it, but worse trouble lay ahead of them, where a terrifying figure waited. He made a strange gesture, and suddenly a tripwire appeared in front of our boys. You clumsy mutt! Clumsy mutt? I would have had them if you hadn't tripped them. Now they've got away. Never mind. They can't stop our plan. We have already silenced every rooster in the country. This night will never end. <laughs> Ma, you're certainly repulsive. Oh, you are too kind, dear boy. Did you hear that? We've got to find a rooster that'll crow at daybreak so all these creeps will disappear. Uh, uh, but we can't get out of the hotel without being spotted. Sure we can. How? This is a linen closet, isn't it? Are uh, we going to lean our way out? As a matter of fact, yes. For two sheets and a pillowcase later, three new ghosts joined the roistering band of spooks and specters. Now, where do we find a rooster? That question was easily answered, for at that moment... <laughs> hey, what's that? Well, there's one school of thought would call it a muffled cry for help. And it's coming from that room. Nothing in here but an old croaker sack. <laughs> and, it, and it's croaking. Somebody or something is in that sack. <laughs> Who are you? Who is it? They said his name is Impel Gritty, is it? Obviously an alias, a nom de sack, as it were. Our boys quickly opened the sack to reveal... A, a rooster! rooster! 
Thank goodness. Now, if you'll only crow, we'll send that whole motley crew of hoo has back to the great unknown. Dad, come on, young fella. Let's hear you crow. If you don't, it's gonna stay Halloween till doomsday. Crow till the last armored foe expires. Crow for your altars and your fires. Crow for the green grass on your sires. Crow for your native land. That was very stirring, Waldo. Thank you. But he's still not crowing. So crow already! <laughs> oh, for the cry eye, 50 million roosters, and we get one whose voice is changing. They, they couldn't you just kind of wing it, fella? <laughs> it's no use with a feeble crow like that. The sun wouldn't bother coming up. Would you? And at that instant, <laughs> gentlemen, your hour has come. Uh-oh, it's the head creep himself. Hey, wrong. It's the headless creep himself. First, you fat and lumpy. I think you would make a lovely rug. Zap! And sure enough, Bill Moore was instantly changed into a bear rug. And you, Fox, I think we change you into a bunny rabbit. Zap! Don't lose heart, fans. Keep watching this channel for the Harry Hair Show. And as for you, Frog... Oh, turn me into anything you want. Anything except a chicken. Don't turn me into a chicken. I hate chickens. I despise chickens. I don't want to be a chicken. <laughs> well, boys and girls, guess what I'm going to turn him into? A chicken. Correct. You think? Be a chicken. Zap. And Hoppity did turn into a chicken. Not just any chicken. I'm a boy chicken. Great slabs of date nut bread. You're a rooster. Get him! But before the fearsome mob could move... <laughs> and our friends found themselves standing in broad daylight beside their truck on the outskirts of a little town called Ware. Hoppity, you did it! I'm not a rabbit! I don't have to wiggle my nose and act cute! And those eggs were killing me. I don't have to let people walk all over me! And I'm not a chicken either! You, you can, can say, say that, that again. again. Let's get out of here. But Uncle Waldo, did all that really happen, or was it just a Halloween story? It was real enough for me. Did it really happen? Is there a place called Where that's a haunted village? Or is there no where? <laughs> <laughs> with Waldo's faithful and beloved medicine show truck spinning along over the open road. Nothing like the call of the open road, eh, Hopper dear? Yeah, but the open road has a few holes in it today. Watch out for that bump, Uncle Waldo. Hey, what bump? That bump. Hey, what's that noise? Sounds like that last bump did something to our motor. Well, I'd better pull over and have a look. The noise isn't coming from the motor, it's coming from inside the truck. And opening up the back of the truck, they found... Fillmore! So it's you, Noodlehead. The name is Fillmore. <laughs> Athlete, bugle blower, and now author. Author? I just wrote a book. Yeah, you want me to read it to you? Would it do any good to say no? Uh, no. Read us the book. <clears throat> a story by Fillmore. <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was three friends. A little one, a bigger one, and a great big dumb one. So far, it sounds familiar. And one day, they met a man who fell out of an airplane. Ah! Oh, 
power of mischief. Where did you come from? I just fell out of an airplane. Just like in Fillmore's book. The man offered to give them a diamond ring. You fellas want a diamond ring? For free. For free. Now, hold on. Why do you want to give us a diamond ring? Because this happens to be the hopeless diamond, and it brings bad luck to whoever has it. Fiddle-faddle. How can a ring bring you bad luck? Falling out of an airplane isn't exactly good luck, you know. Well, I still don't believe in such things. Then you'll take it. Certainly. Hooray! I'm free! I'm free! Ah, he must be a real screwball to give away a ring such as this. Why, it must be worth a fortune. Either that or the ring really is bad luck. My book says it was a dark day for the friends because the ring was cursed with bad luck. Balderdash, what does your book know about it? It's been right so far, Uncle Waldo. So what? We've got the ring and nothing has happened yet. A short distance away, two lumberjacks are cutting down a tall tree and... Timber! What happened? Uh, you had a little bad luck there, Waldo. Uh, a tree fell on you. That settles it. We better get rid of this ring. We'll get rid of it by going to town and selling it. Walk this way. Ignoring the bad luck, they returned to Waldo's truck and headed for town. But before they had gone very far... Uh, we're not going to make it. Who says so? It's right here on page 34 of my book. I shouldn't ask, but what does it say? Uh, it wasn't long before bad luck struck the three friends again. They were going around a steep curve. Watch out for this curve, Uncle Waldo. I've got it. Uh, when they had a flat tire... The truck out of control, zoomed off a high cliff, and crashed into a tree. Do you believe the ring is bad luck now, Uncle Waldo? No, now let's get out of here and we'll walk to town. I don't believe this. I simply do not believe it. I mean, after all. Leaving the truck and carefully climbing down the tree, Hoppity and Fillmore hurried to Waldo's side. Uncle Waldo, are you hurt? No, of course not. How could falling 200 feet and landing on your head hurt you? That proves the ring is bad luck. It does nothing of the sort. Here, you can carry the ring for a while, Hopper, dear. Just for the record, what does your book say happens next, Fillmore? Uh, chapter 5. The ring strikes again. The three friends fall off the highest bridge in the county. It all started... Hold on. We're on a bridge now. Don't move. It feels like it's going to give way any second. I give up. Let's get rid of the ring. What is it, Hopper? I gave it to Fillmore. And, and I got it right here with my finger. Stuck tight. With the ring stuck tight on Fillmore's finger, there was no way to escape the bad luck. And... <laughs> Be sure to watch next time for Darn the Luck or Summer, Spring, and Fall. In our last episode, Fillmore got the hopeless diamond ring stuck on his finger. And the bad luck stuck right along with it. The bridge they were standing on collapsed and... Get that ring off, Fillmore. Maybe it'll change our luck in time. Hey, you're kidding, of course. The 50 million four-leaf clovers couldn't help us now. Rocks, here we come. There aren't any rocks down there. There's a nice wide river. What luck? The water will break our fall. But their luck was still running bad. They missed the water. And hit a sandbar. Now, well, this is the first time in a hundred episodes we didn't get saved from a cliffhanger. Uh, it's the first time in a hundred episodes we've had the hopeless diamond ring going for us. How are we going to get to shore? What does your book say, Fillmore? It hasn't been wrong yet. Uh, but they were soon picked up by a boat. Uh, that sounds like good luck for a change. I don't believe it. I don't either. However, there was a boat coming downriver. A boat owned and operated by two unscrupulous river pirates. Uh, here comes the boat, right on cue. Delighted that they at last had somebody to rob, the river pirates wasted no time in picking up our hero. Now you might just make yourselves to home while we plan our first move. And so our innocent heroes lounged around the boat while the two rogues schemed to rob them. Hey, do you suppose the little green guy's got any money? He don't know where no clothes. Where would he keep it? I'll find out. Hey, you got change for a five, Maggie? No. Do you have any money at all? Heck no. Where would I keep it? That's what we figured. 
Next, the two scoundrels tried Waldo. Hey, give us a your coat, mon ami. We will press it for you. Oh, how nice. See if you can fluff up the shoulders a bit. Hmm. Hmm. There's a nothing in his pockets but cookie crumbs. Let's try his pants pockets. Nothing but more cookie crumbs. Then they turned to Fillmore. And when they saw the diamond ring on his finger... Hey, is that a real diamond ring? Uh, you bet your hockey puck it is. Oh, well. <laughs> In that case, this is a stick-up. We want that diamond ring. Wonderful. We'd love to give it to you. Uh, but we can't. It's stuck here on my finger. Oh, that's no problem. We can get it off. Can't we, Pierre? Sure. Uh, they cut it out. I mean, uh, don't cut it out. They were in a tight spot, and Hoppity had to act fast. Grabbing the wheel, he crashed the boat into the shore. Good Lord, Hoppity, that'll hold them. Let's get out of here. Our only chance is to get the ring off Fillmore's finger and let him have it. Capital thought, but how? Maybe Fillmore's book can tell us. Read, Fillmore, read. Dead. The three terrified friends ran to the cabin. The book is still on the beam. There is a cabin. They hurried inside and Fillmore continued. It, and they steamed their big friend until his fingers got skinny and the ring fell off. Steam him? Did I write that? That's it. We'll make Fillmore lose weight. And quickly rigging up a steam cabinet, they proceeded to reduce Fillmore. Are you skinny yet, Fillmore? Uh, no, but uh, they won't be long now. They must be 190 in the shade in here. But at that moment, their time ran out. The river pirates crashed through the door. Now we're gonna take the ring the hard way. Wait, I think Fillmore's done. We did it. Here, take the ring. Please, take the ring. Hey. I ain't never seen anybody so anxious to be robbed before. Taking the ring, the two pirates ran to an old car outside and made a speeding getaway down the mountain. Now they can have the bad luck, which will be happening about now. See what I mean? And it all happened just like in my book. What does your book say happens now, Fillmore? It, it says just one more thing. Be sure to watch for the next adventure of Hoppity Hooper. The end. There's an old saying that all the world loves an organ grinder's monkey. Oh, what a darling monkey! <laughs> if that monkey happens to look like Fillmore, it's for a very good reason. It is Fillmore. You see, our friends have taken on an odd job for the summer. As odd is the right word for it, too. We took over for an organ grinder while he and his monkey went on vacation. Uh, yeah, but uh, how come I got to be the monkey? Now, let's just say it's typecasting and let it go at that. Hmm? It, I'll have to admit, uh, it does come kind of easy. <laughs> Taking a monkey out of himself does come easy for Fillmore. But at the county fairgrounds on the other side of town, there is something going on that will shortly make monkeys out of all three of our heroes. Hooray! It is the big race of the fair, and two horse owners are rooting for their horse to win. Come on, come on, boy, come on boy, run, pick up your horse. Oh, and uh, the horses are coming into the stretch. Uh, Fat Man and Bay Window are out in the front. Uh, dirty Guy is cheating. Cheap Guy is fading, and Mr. Exhausted is uh, getting tired. Uh, how come he didn't mention our horse, Big Dud? I don't know, 
know, but he must be in there someplace. Keep yelling. Come, come on, on, come on, that. come on, big dog, run. Bird, bird, run. run. Now, I says I'll for lashing across the finish line, and the winner is uh, Gum Legs. Gum Legs? What happened to Big Dot? Now, it's just possible he hasn't come in yet. We better stick around and see. So they waited and waited and waited. Then, three hours later... I've heard a horse is coming in last, but this is ridiculous. And going back to the starting gate, they found their horse, Big Dud. No wonder he never finished. He never started. Without a doubt, we own the most weightless race horse in the world. Not for long, we won't. We're going to get rid of him first thing in the morning. Early the next morning, our heroes were back on the job, but they also had their problems. Did I quit? The K-W-I-T quit. Aren't you happy in your work? What's so bad about being the monkey? Hey, for one thing, I'm getting fleas. Here comes the organ grinder. Hey, I'm back, boys. How you was, eh? Hey, boy, am I glad to see you guys. And I must say, you look nice and rested. Where'd you go on your vacation? Ha <laughs> ha. We was a visiting our relatives. Yours? No, his. With the job done, the organ grinder paid them their money and went on his way. Boys, we are in the chips again. Yeah, but this time, let's be smart about it. Now, what are you talking about, Hopper Jam? Well, every time we get any money, we do something stupid and lose it right away. Oh, peaches and plum pits, I see what you mean. Mm, by golly, this time we will be smart about it. <laughs> How? As simple as pie, we'll invest it wisely and make more money. Uh, wisely? Therein lies the rub, like the fellow said. Pull in your ears, frog fans. Here comes the plot. You see what I see? It's a frog, a fox, and a bear. What's so unusual about that? It might look like a frog, fox, and a bear to you. <coughs> but they look like three pigeons to me. Gee, why would anybody want to sell a swell horse like that? Oh, we are forced to sell. Sickness in a family. What a shame. Yeah, somebody who is smart with money will certainly get a good deal by buying this horse. Yes, I shouldn't wonder. Smart with money. Wait here. I'll be right back. Our heroes broke some kind of a record at being stupid with their money this time. For in less than five minutes... What do you mean you bought the horse? That's right, Big Dud is ours now. Golly, and I thought we were going to be smart with our money. But this is smart. We can enter him in races all over the country and win a fortune. All I can say is I hope Big Dud isn't a Big Dud. Look at him. He's sound asleep. Oh, nonsense. He's standing up. How could he be asleep if he's standing... <laughs> Good, he's got to. He is asleep. Does owning the world's most worthless racehorse mean serious trouble for our friends? Watch next time for You Better Believe It or Don't Nag Me. As you remember, our friends had taken over for an organ grinder while he and his monkey had gone on vacation. <laughs> Guess who I took over for? They know who you took over for, Phil Mom. But it all seemed worth it when the organ grinder returned and paid them a tidy sum for their efforts. Oh, look at these lovely letters. <laughs> we're loaded. Yeah, and this time we're going to be smart with our money, right? Wrong. For less than ten minutes later, they bought a racehorse named Big Dud. And he is. <laughs> I don't see how anybody can say that Big Dud is a Big Dud. Well, for one thing, he's been asleep since we got him. Trust me, this is the smartest move we ever made. Who knows? He might win the Kentucky Derby. Uh, so who wants to win a hat? Maybe you're right, Uncle Waldo. Just because he sleeps all the time doesn't mean he can't run when he wakes up. Exactly. What's our next move? Now, it says right here in the newspaper that Audrey Meadows Racetrack opens in a week. All we have to do is take Big Dud there and enter him into a race. Hey, hey, one moment. I got a question. Shoot. Hey, how do we get a sleeping horse halfway across the country? Hey, I'm sorry I asked. Heading up the freeway approach, our heroes took Highway 6. And considering they were carrying a sleeping horse, they made very good time. For three days later, they arrived at Audrey Meadows. 
Gee, where'd you get the money to pay for this stall, Uncle Waldo? Well, I just had them put it on our bill. We can pay it off after Big Don wins his first race. Boy, if only he'd wake up, I'd feel better about the whole thing. Hey, I'll blow my bugle. Okay, maybe that'll do it. He's awake, he's awake. Katie, where'd he go? Look! Good grief, he eats like a herd of brother-in-laws. And in no time at all. Boy, I can't believe it, he ate the whole haystack. Kate, uh-oh, here comes the stable boss. <laughs> Just charge that seven tons of hay to my bill, sir. I already did. I was afraid of that. At least Big Dud is awake now. Well, come on, let's hurry and give him a workout before he goes to sleep again. Kate, are you going to be the jerky, Hoppity? That's jockey, and yes, Fillmore. Hang on, Hoppity. Get on your marks. Get set. Go! <laughs> Melba's marmalade. Big Dud is running like the wind. Yes, Big Dud was running like the wind. There was just one thing wrong. He was running like the wind backwards. <laughs> No, 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 Hoppity. He's supposed to run forward, not backward. Tell Big Dud, not me. I was trying. Yes, I was right. He's a jerky jockey. Now let's try it again. Get on your marks. Get set. Go. Hey, oh, no. Backwards again. And though they tried for the rest of that afternoon, not once did they get Big Dud to run the right way. Oh, it's no use. He's asleep again. And this time he's sucking his thumb. Well, 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 look who's here. What's the matter, boys? Are you unhappy just because your horse runs backwards? And sleeps all the time? And sucks his thumb? And eats too much? Oh, what a shame. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was the two dirty guys who sold us Big Dud in the first place. No, they're not going to get away with cheating us. I'm going to get our money back. Hey, they, what if they won't give it back? I'll be firm. Hold on. I want a word with you two. Hey, what did they say, Waldo? Well, they said no. Hey, were you firm? And only for a second. Hey, look. Big Dud is awake. Well, that's good. No, it isn't. He's eating again. Oh, no. Hey, come on. Big Dud, you crazy oh, boy. Don't you Will Big Dud eat our friends right into debtor's prison? Find out in our next episode entitled The Bronco Bill or Pay Up Charlie Horse. Well, Frog fans, we learned last time that our heroes own the only racehorse in the world that runs backwards. And he sucks his thumb. But the worst part is that he eats like... What did you have to go and say eat for? We gotta stop him. Hey, too late. Gee, Big Dud ain't another haystack. Shh, not so loud. Maybe the stable boss won't notice. Won't notice what? Huh? Oh, uh, well, uh, uh, I just said uh, I didn't notice you standing there. What's that you're writing? I'm adding another 15 tons of hay to your bill. I figured that's what it was. What in the world did that poor fellow do to warrant such treatment? He didn't pay his bill. <gasps> By the way, here's yours. Abba, 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 abba. It's due tomorrow. What are we going to do? Hey, I don't know what you're going to do, hey, but I'm going to blow my bugle. What for? Hey, maybe the cavalry will come over the hill and save us. <laughs> Now, look what you did. You scared Dud. But, Uncle Waldo, look. Big Dud is running forward. I don't care if he's running for... What? For some strange reason, Fillmore's bugle blowing made Big Dud run the right way for the first time in his life. I can't believe it. Maybe this is the answer to everything. Come on. Just to make sure, they took Big Dud back to the starting gate. Hang on, Hoppity. Whee! <laughs> 
Big Dud took off at high speed, running backwards. But then... Okay, Fillmore, let him blow! There's Roger, Waldo. Over and in. Big Dud reacted instantly, slamming on his brakes. He put into high gear and ran forward. Yippee! It worked, Fillmore! That bugle of yours is A1! Uh, no, it isn't. It's E flat. Look at Big Dud go! And when Big Dud was finished, they couldn't believe their eyes. Scramble fish eggs! Big Dud just ran a 30-second mile! But the two dirty guys who sold Big Dud to our heroes in the first place did believe their eyes. Did you see that? Big Dud isn't a Big Dud anymore. Because of that stupid bear and his dumb bugle, he's the fastest horse in the world. Oh, do you suppose they'll enter him in the big race this afternoon? We'll enter Dud in the big race this afternoon. Uh, yeah, we're ruined. Yes, the two dirty guys had every cent they owned on horse number seven. And even though they had the race fixed, they were certain to lose against Big Dud and the Bugle. Hmm, maybe we can do something about that Bugle. You mean... Right. If they lose the Bugle, we win the race. Of all the dirty guys in the world, Louis, I love you best. Yeah. yeah. That afternoon, just minutes before the big race, <laughs> Big Dud is a cinch to win. Yeah. Who said it's stupid to own a race horse? It was now time for the race, and... They're off. It's a good start, and the horses are heading into the first turn. That is all except Big Dud. He's running backwards. Dot, dot, we don't worry about that. But they should have worried about it, because just then the dirty guys made their move. Uh, pardon me, sir. Would you mind holding this here hot dog for me? Uh, why, no. Uh, I'll kindly hold your bugle for you. Uh, that is very kindly, I'm sure. The horses are running round the train, and Big Dud is still running backwards. Now, Fillmore, blow the bugle! Hey, Roger, Waldo, here we go! Will Fillmore blow the hot dog instead of the bugle? Be sure to watch our next episode entitled Waldo with Mustard or Hold the Onions. As you remember, it was discovered that Fillmore's bugle was finally good for something. For when he blew it, it caused Big Dud to stop running backwards and run forward. <laughs> Our heroes wasted no time in entering Big Dud in the feature race at Audrey Meadows that very afternoon. for the first turn. That is all but Big Dud. He's running backwards. At that moment, the two dirty guys tricked Fillmore into holding a hot dog while they made off with his bugle. Big Dud is still running backwards and... Uh, now's the time, Fillmore. Blow the bugle. But not having the bugle, Fillmore blew the hot dog. Uh, nothing came out. Oh, yes, something did. A hot dog. Uh, my bugle has blown some cheesy notes before, but never a weenie. That is your bugle, Fillmore. Where's your bugle? Uh, I remember. Uh, those dirty guys took my bugle. So they handed me this hot dog and they said... Never mind, come on. And the horses are rounding the turn and Big Dud is running backwards. Why don't they blow a bugle? And uh, now it's the bomb on number seven out in front. That's our bugle. Uh, be firm, Waldo. Don't worry, I shall. Now see here, you. You. Who are you calling a you, you? Uh, how dare you hit Waldo when he's being firm. I'd like to see you try that again. Fillmore, you stay out of this. Big Dud is now passing our horses going the other way. And, uh... So you want the bugle, huh? Uh, yeah, then you better give it to us. Okay. Lift your foot. Uh, like this? Yeah. Now put your foot down. Uh, like this? Here you are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I got it, Walter. I got it. <laughs> uh, hey, it won't blap. Of course it won't blap. You squash it with your foot. Uh, fix it. Uh, fix it. Number seven, the bomb is still out in front. And uh, wait, what's this? Big Dud seems to be sitting in the middle of the track. 
big dud. This is no time to be sucking your thumb. I'm hurried, Fillmore. It's, it's all done. Except for being back, I bet it's as good as new. Ah! See? It has the same bell-like tone. Just blow it. The race is almost over. Yeah, right. Keeping that nag? Oh, oh no, sir. No, 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 sir. Now we've glass the cup. Say, how natural. We're broke again. Yes, but maybe not for long. What do you mean, Uncle Waldo? Well, we've got the cup and Big Dud. We can go into business for ourselves. What kind of business? The monkey business. And they did. This is keen being in business for ourselves, isn't it, Uncle Waldo? Now you bet your sweat socks. But why do I have to be the organ grinder? Oh, quit beefing. At least this time, you don't have to be the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Will our heroes own a chain of organ grinders someday? Be sure to find out in the next exciting adventure of Hoppity Hooper. <laughs> It's a beautiful day, and our happy friends are spinning along the open road. Fillmore is driving. Hey, we're going to the beach. And inside the truck, Hoppity and Waldo are busy making sandwiches. Peanut butter. Peanut butter. Quince jelly. Quince jelly. Bread. Bread? You should have asked for that first. You put the peanut butter and jelly on the palm of your hand. So I did. Towel. Take everybody out. The beach has survived. I've got the beach umbrella. I've got the beach chairs. I got my stained pale and rubber horsey. Ah, uh, nothing like Sierra. Okay, let's take a swim in the ocean before we eat. Great, last one in is a mud sucker. It was then they made a rather startling discovery. There was no ocean anywhere in sight. How can this be? There's always an ocean at the beach. We're not at the beach. We're way out in the country someplace. Well, come to think of it, that isn't Sierra. Must be a dairy close by. Look at that sign. According to that, we're in Kansas. Fillmore, you got us lost. Did I follow this map? That isn't a map. It's a crinkled piece of wax paper. Hey, well, I followed the crinkles. No wonder we wrapped the sandwiches in the map. Read it and find out where we are. I can't. It's covered with peanut butter. This is a fine kettle of sardines. Well, there's a house up the road a ways. Maybe they can help us. Going to the house, they knocked on the door. Whereupon, they were in for another surprise. Yes? Who? Son, you're home. And I'm not your son, ma'am. And I'm Fillmore. Oh, you must be my boy. No, I'm Waldo. Well, don't look at me, ma'am. I'm a frog. Oh, the sadness of it all. I thought sure my son had come back to me. <laughs> there, there, Mother. What happened to your son? Perhaps we can help. Oh, if only you could. Come on in and I'll tell you the whole sad story. The old woman told our heroes a strange tale. 
It all started one day in this very room when my son came in for lunch. Boy, am I starved. How about some millet and gruel, Mom? We don't have any. Okay, make it curds and whey. All out. Peanut butter and quince jelly sandwich? None in the house. Well, what have we got? Nothing. Brace yourself, Booby. Our cupboard is bare. Hey, this is the saddest story I ever heard. Oh, quiet, Fillmore. Go on, ma'am. Well, I was sitting there watching my son waste away to nothing when suddenly I got an idea. Son! We have a cow. Great idea, Mom. Bring it in and I'll eat it. No, no. We can sell the cow and use the money to buy food. So off he went to market with the cow. And he came back loaded with money. No. No? He came back with bees. But those are only bees. Well, some nut told him they were magic beans and they gave the cow away for him. Wait a minute. Did you throw some of those beans out the window? Yes, and when I woke up the next morning, there was a big tall weed outside, and my boy was gone. <laughs> and that was 47 years ago. Oh, but he, I think the old lady is putting us on. Next thing you know, she'll be telling us her son's name was Jack. My son's name was Jack. <laughs> see there? She just told us the story of Jack and the Beanstalk, and I believe her. Uh, me too. Come on now, you two. I... Ma'am, I think we know where your son is, and we might be able to get him back for you. Oh, do you promise? Uh, yes. That boy should be with his mother, and it's our duty. And when our friends got outside... Now, what did you have to go and promise a thing like that for? Uh, because the boy should be with his mother, and... I know all that, but you act like Jack and the Beanstalk really happened. Well, maybe it did. We'll just plant some of these beans and see what happens. Hey, well, what do you know? Instant magic beans. Good grief, it, it's true. We're going straight up for the beanstalk. Hey, hang on, Jack. Hey, we're going to bring you back to Mama. <laughs> it's a noble thing they do. But we must remember, if Jack and the Beanstalk is a true story, there's a giant up there somewhere. Be sure to watch our next episode for A Hassle in the Castle or The fee fi fo Fumble. In our last episode, we discovered that the story of Jack and the Beanstalk was true. And we left our heroes riding a beanstalk up to find Jack, who had been missing 47 years. Stop that, Fillmore! Yes, I'm just letting Jack know we're on our way to save him. But why? Why do we have to be the one? We promised his mother! Swell, but who's going to save us? What do you mean? Listen, I read that book. There's a giant up there. Yeah, and he can smell the blood of Peter Sellers. You mean an Englishman? That's him, that's him. That's something we'll have to worry about when we get there. And on up they went, higher than the birds. Higher than the clouds. Higher than Flight 417 out of Miami. What do you think, Ed? About the bear who just went by and the beanstalk? Yeah. I think we should never admit to a living soul we saw it. Roger. On and on they traveled until finally, just like in the story, they came to a large, soft, fleecy cloud. They don't make soft, fleecy clouds the way they used to. But we made it. We're here. Hey, where's here, Hoppity? The top of the cloud where we should see the giant's castle and look. There it is. It is the giant's castle. Oh, how I wish this dreaded story wasn't true. Hey, that, that castle is where we're going to find Jack, fellas. It's also where we're going to find the giant. Well, let's go, but take it easy. Being as careful and quiet as mice, our friends approached the castle. Softly, quietly, until they finally reach the huge main door. Yahoo! Yippee! <laughs> hey, the strain was too much. Waldo has flipped his stinker. Quiet, Waldo, the giant. Giant ho! I don't care a snap about the giant. Oh, you're the bravest Waldo I know. Not really, Fillmore. Look what's on the door. It's a note. Out to lunch. Back in two hours. The giant. Hey, that gives us two hours to find Jack and get out of here. Come on. Slipping through a crack in the door, the boys dashed into the castle in search of Jack. Jack! Jack! you hoo Jack! Hey, Jack and the Beanstalk, where are you? <laughs> For over an hour, they searched the castle without a sign of Jack. 
time is running out. What are we going to do? Uh, we could ask the old man. What old man? Uh, that old man. Howdy, boys. You looking for me? No, old timer. We're looking for young Jack. Well, you can stop looking, bub. I'm young Jack. Come now. Jack is just a little boy. Wait a minute. Jack has been missing for a long time, remember? Forty-seven years. Come this fall. Then you really are, Jack. Yep. What have you been doing? Why didn't you go home years ago? I tried, Sonny, but I couldn't. Uh, why not? Well, sir, it happened this way. <laughs> When I got here, I found a goose that lays golden eggs. But the minute I grabbed that goose, <coughs> my goose was cooked. The giant heard the ruckus and was coming fast. So I ran back to my beanstalk. But just as I got there... And I've been stuck here ever since. So what happened to the beanstalk? I figured Mother cut it down thinking it was a weed. Well, don't you worry. We got a new beanstalk. Well, we'd better hurry. The giant is due back any second. Grabbing Jack, they raced out of the castle. Unfortunately, back on Earth, history was about to repeat itself. Drat another wig. Timber! And just as our friends were about to go down the beanstalk... Well, she did it again. Now we're all stuck up here. Yeah, I got worse news than that. Impossible, but what? Uh, listen. Fee, fi, fo, fo. The, the giant's coming. coming. Don't miss our next episode, The King Size Surprise or Jolly Green Trouble. As you remember, in our last episode, there was big trouble. The giant was coming. Fee, fi, fo, fum. And our heroes were caught with their beanstalk down. The giant is getting closer. What are we going to do? Hey, let's hide. Hide? There's no place to hide out here on the cloud. Back to the castle. Hurry. And running as though their lives depended on it, which they did, they sped back to the castle. Let's hide under the rock. No, we might get stepped. Hey, what a gooey thought. You should be an expert on hiding, Jack. What do we do? Nothing. Nothing. What do you mean, nothing? It's too late. And too late it was. She caught them flat-footed. She? Yes, she. The giant was a woman. Hello, dear. Don't you hello me, you shipless runt. Yes, dear. The giant is a woman. You call her dear. I, you, that I mean. I guess I should have explained before. She's my wife. Your, Your wife? wife? Aren't you, dear? Yes, and don't forget it. <whistles> no, dear. You married the giant? Yeah, in the summer of 31. She was a lovely bride. Huge but lovely. Who are those three bums with you? Those bums are friends of mine, Sugar Plum. How many times have I told you not to bring your tramp friends home for dinner? But honey bun! If they expect any food, they'll have to work for it. They can help you clean the house like I told you to this morning. Now get busy. Dude, I got a hunch we better do like she says. Oh, yes. My wife is a very strong-willed person. And I got that impression. Where do we start, Jack? By doing the dishes. Dude, that sounds easy enough. Not around here, it isn't. Take a look. Yes, cleaning up a giant's castle is a big job with big dirt. But there was nothing to do but get to work. Gee, these dried egg stains are hard to get off. If you think that's tough, wait till you try to get lipstick off a coffee cup. Hold well on, haul away, Jack. <laughs> Considering the job they had to do, they did it in jig time. For in less than a week... Hey, God, talk about dishpan hands. Dude, I even got dishpan feet from walking through soapy saucers. At least now we can rest. Not yet. We gotta scrub the floors. Oh, oh no. no! And so they scrubbed floors. And washed windows. And made beds. Until finally, 
It's no use. I've had it. Me too. Hey, me three. We can't stop now. My wife will be furious. So what? She can't do anything about it. We're not here. Hey, but we are here, Waldo. At least we were here the last time I looked. What are you talking about, Waldo? Us getting out of here. How? We're miles up in the sky. Leave it to me. I'll think of a way. Stand back, everybody. Waldo's got to think. <laughs> Wow, Waldo's really thinking hard this time. I've got it! Hooray, what is it? We'll fly back to the Earth like birds. <laughs> fly? fly? We can't fly. Why not? The Wright brothers did. But they had an airplane. And we've got Fillmore. Dude, I don't really want to be launched. It's the only way we can find out if it works. Nothing to worry about. Just flap your arms. Fillmore was launched, and the test was underway. Flap, Fillmore, flap! Fillmore flapped. And he flew. It works! Our worries are over! Not quite, Waldo, for Fillmore's flying had suddenly placed him in a very dangerous situation. Darn flies! I can't stand the pesky things. Don't miss our next episode, Spot on the Wall or The Flat of the Land. In our last episode, our heroes were testing a desperate plan to escape. Fillmore was launched to see if it was possible for them to make a flying getaway. Flap, Fillmore, flap your arms! Fillmore flapped for all he was worth, and he flew. Hey, look at me! I'm flying! I'm flying! It looked as if the plan was a smashing success, but it was about to turn into a crushing defeat. Ratted fly, I'll fix him. Just then, fortunately for Fillmore, he lost control and crashed into a jar of jelly. And the swat intended for him was a complete miss. Dude, I wish to report that your stupid flying idea was a dude. That's dud, and what do you mean you flew, didn't you? Oh, sure, but I couldn't steer. What's that stuff all over you, Fillmore? Hey, that's proof that I couldn't steer. I crashed into a jar of jelly. <sniffs> Strawberry. <sighs> well, it's just as well. Thought it over and I can't leave anyway. After all, I am a married man. What about your mother? We promised her we'd bring you home. Well, I'd like to see her. Oh, if she was only here. Wait a minute, I just got the idea of the century. Like what? Like, why not bring Jack's mother up here? But how? Simple as sassafras. We drop her a note and tell her to plant another magic bean. I'd get it, then she could climb up the beanstalk. Jack would be with his mother, and we would have a beanstalk to climb down. Rushing out of the castle into the very edge of the cloud, they put this marvelous plan to work. I've written the note right on this rock. That ought to do the trick. And down, down went the note-inscribed rock, hurtling toward its destination. Unfortunately. Well, that didn't work. Next, they tried a note folded into a paper airplane. Down it flew where it was caught by an ill wind that carried it all the way to our nation's capital in Washington, D.C. What's this, Ev? I don't know, Charlie, but you'd better sign it. The paper airplane was signed and went before Congress. All in favor of planting another bean, say aye. aye. The bill was passed and is now part of our farm program. You'll just have to face it, boys. We're stuck up here forever. And we can't keep our promise to Jack's mother. There still might be one way. Look, I have a few magic beans left. What good does that do? Well, we could drop them down. One might land under Mother and, uh... Say, it might work a that. It's worth a try. Taking the magic Aww. beans, Hoppity took careful aim and let them fall. <whistles> the beans scattered to the four winds. That is all but one. It fell straight as an arrow and scored a direct hit. <whistles> Success at last. You've come home at last. Jack, my little old dried up gray baby. Mommy! Jack and his mother were finally together again, and this was to make a big change in Jack's life around the castle. 
You look so thin, booby. I don't think that worthless woman you married is feeding you right. Yes, Mommy. Bertha! Yes, Mother Jack, coming. Fix my boy some chicken soup. You want him to starve to death? No, Mother Jack. Then get busy. Yes, Mother Jack. Really, I don't see what you saw in that woman in the first place. Me either, Mother Jack. Yes, it is a known fact that the only thing tougher than a mean wife is a mean mother-in-law. And Jack was to live happily ever after. Now we can find down the beanstalk and be on our way. Goodbye, fellas. Thanks for everything. This here is the happiest ending we ever had. But looking back, waving to Jack, they didn't watch where they were going. And... Oh! This is a happy ending? The only way to find out is to watch for the next adventure of Hoppity Hooper. If our three heroes show up, you will know this was a happy ending after all. Foggy Bog, Wisconsin, was having a crime wave. It was a one-man crime wave staged by that master cut purse, Yegman Footpad, that 20th century Robin Hood, the Masked Martin. We're having a crime wave, a tropical crime wave. I'm Robin Hood's double, who's always in trouble. A real Foggy Bog crime wave. The only difference between Masked Martin and Robin Hood was that Martin stole from the poor and gave to the rich. What are you watching, dear? I think it's the new David Susskind show. You see, my good people, that is the switch. I steal from the poor and I give to the rich. <laughs> Look, dear, stereo. And to think we owe it all to the masked Martin. So because of the masked Martin, the rich were getting richer. And the poor were getting poorer. However, the masked Martin's escapades did not go unnoticed by that great criminologist, Professor Waldo Wigglesworth. Hoppity, Fillmore, it's time to put a stop to the escapades of the masked Martin. But, Uncle Wallow, isn't that a job for the police? Of course, Hoppity, my boy. But it's our job to aid and abet the law enforcement of our great little town. Now then, let's try to establish a pattern of the masked Martin's recent crimes. Martin's pattern is he steals from the poor and gives to the rich. He's what we used to call in the yard a nonconformist. The normal robber steals from the rich and gives to the poor, which means... Yeah? We are dealing with a beatnik bandit. So, here's my plan. I'm going to disguise myself as a poor man and become a decoy for this malfeasant. And when he tries to rob me, wham, I'll nab him. Do you want us to come along, Uncle Waldo? No, I'd better work alone on this case, Hoppity, my boy. The three of us would be a dead giveaway. So Waldo took a room in the poor section of Foggy Bog and waited. What are you doing here? I thought I told you to wait in the car. I thought you might be hungry. I brought you a liver waste sandwich. Oh, good thinking, Fillmore. I love liver waste. I'm as hungry as you part the expression bear. I'll just hand it over. Uh, hand what over, Professor? The liver waste sandwich. 
It's gone, Waldo. Well, what do you mean it's gone? Are you sure you came in here with it? Uh, sure. Uh, I opened the door, and then somebody turned off the lights, and it's gone. You mean somebody stole my liver beer sandwich? Well, that's nonsense, Fillmore. We're the only two people in this room. Unless you don't suppose the masked Martin has stolen my liver beer sandwich? Well, that would be too ridiculous even for a beatnik bandit. My compliments to the cook, Alfred. Not the cook, sir. The masked Martin. So you really think the masked Martin was here? Well, Hoppity, my liver beer sandwich didn't just walk away now, did it? But why would the masked Martin steal a liverwurst sandwich, Waldo? Well, how do I know? Maybe he likes liverwurst. What we must now do is reenact the crime. Hoppity, you and Fillmore go down and buy me another liverwurst sandwich while I wait here. Hey, look, Waldo, I made it. I still got the liverwurst sandwich. Yes, you still have the liverwurst sandwich, but that only proves that the masked Martin wasn't here. Oh, he was here all right. Papa, do you see that Fillmore still has the liverwurst sandwich, don't you? Yeah. Then what makes you think that the masked Martin was here? Because he's stolen your clothes, Uncle Waldo. <laughs> Oh, I thought that was a little chilly. Well, it seems the only thing that Waldo is going to catch is a cold in the head. Be sure to watch our next episode, Elementary, My Dear Fillmore, or Show Me a Liverwurst and I'll Show You a Thief. <laughs> in our last episode, had his liverwurst sandwich stolen by the Masked Martin. But why would the Masked Martin steal a liverwurst sandwich, Uncle Waldo? How should I know? Maybe he likes liverwurst. What we must now do is reenact the crime. Hoppity, you and Fillmore go down and buy me another liverwurst sandwich while I wait here. I made it! I still got the liverwurst sandwich! That only proves that the masked Martin wasn't here! Oh, he was here all right! But what makes you think so? Because he's stolen your clothes, Uncle Waldo! Oh, I thought I was a little chilly. Yes, Waldo was a little more than concerned. This time the masked Martin has gone too far, and by George, I would apprehend that land robber in one minute, but for one reason. What reason is that, Uncle Waldo? Modesty. This time, the masked Martin has gone too far. What's wrong, dear? How can I be seen in an outfit like this? Professor Waldo Wigglesworth did not give up easily. After he got over a mild case of pneumonia, he at once set to work on his invention, which he called... Professor Waldo Wigglesworth, Masked Martin Cutler's Catcher. Beautiful, beautiful. You will notice that I have a liverwurst sandwich as bait here. Once Martin takes that liverwurst sandwich, I'll have it. <coughs> what was that, Silbar? I think that was the noon whistle, Waldo. It's time for lunch. Oh, good. I'm as hungry as, if you'll pardon the expression, Fillmore, bear. Turn it off, Fillmore! Turn it off! By George Fillmore, that's the last time I have a little of a sandwich for lunch. As I said before, Professor Waldo Wigglesworth did not give up easy. So, Waldo, why don't you give up easy? Nonsense! What is the one thing that we've been overlooking, Watson? The Watson? The, my name is Clothes! We must find clues. Come, Watson, come. The game is afoot. Duh, Professor. Aha! Footprints! <laughs> 
Mr. Waldo, those are mice. Mm, Watson, they look like the footprints of a giant howl. Yeah, but Waldo, those are mice. Mm, no, Watson, they're more like the footprints of a giant bear. Do you know what we're up against here? Uh, yes, Professor, the we... The bear of the Baskervilles. The masked Martin has adopted the disguise of a giant bear. How very clever of him. By George, we're up against a foggy bog Moriarty, Watson. Uh, Waldo, will you forget about those footprints? Uh, they, they, they Tim! Of course you want me to forget about those footprints because they are your footprints. Take off that disguise, Masked Martin. No! No! By George, it is you, Fillmore. Uh, uh, that's what I was trying to tell you. And, and, and uh, the real Masked Martin is running out that door. Oh, don't just stand there. Come, Watson. The game is a fox. Waldo, look. It says walk. Quite right, Fillmore. <laughs> Never do to get a ticket for Jay running in a walk zone. Now we've got him, Fillmore. If you will notice, there is no possible way to escape from this blind alley. Uh, yeah, Professor. Then you can say that again. If you desire the masked Martin to snatch, make sure you're the catcher and not the catch. It does seem as though the masked Martin is the catcher and Waldo and Fillmore are the catch. Tune in to our next episode, Waldo's Alley or Catch as Catch Can. <laughs> We've got him, Fillmore. If you will notice, there is no possible way to escape from this blind alley. Uh, yeah, Professor. Then uh, you can say that again. Uh, what are we going to do now, Professor? Uh, well, what we have here, Fillmore, is an extremely <laughs> solid wall. What I can't understand is how we got in here in the first place. Uh, the masked Martin just built that wall, Waldo. And a splendid job, too. You will notice how he laid these bricks with an economy of mortar. Yes, Fillmore, this is the job of a craftsman. A uh, professor! I don't care what kind of a job it is. Uh, how are we going to get out of here? Die, die, die. Uh, did you say something, Fillmore? Uh, yeah, I said, how are we going to get out of here? Die, die, die. You did not. You said doing, doing, doing. I did not say doing, Waldo. Well, then who said it? Doing, doing, doing. It's coming from the other side of the brick wall. Doing. Why, it's Hoppity! Hi, fellas. What are you doing here? It's a long story, Hoppity. What we have to figure out now is how to get out of here. Well, why don't you just hop out? Doing. No, you see, nature did not bless us with your particular physical gift for hopping, Hoppity. I just have to think of something else. I got it! We'll blast our way out. Uh, how are we going to do that, Waldo? We'll have Hoppity hop over the wall and get some dynamite and blow down the wall. So Hoppity hopped over the wall and down the street. Hoppity is taking an interminable length of time getting here with that dynamite, Fillmore. Uh, maybe he got lost, Waldo. I think I heard a boy. Uh, boy, that was some boy. Are you hurt, Uncle Waldo? No. Will somebody please answer that phone? Uh, what what phone? phone? The phone that is ringing inside my head. Oh, never mind. I'll answer it myself. Hello, Wigglesworth here. 
What's that? Herman's Delicatessen. I'm sorry, you must have the wrong number. Listen, I told you. What's that? The Masked Martin. Well, with whom do you wish to speak, please? Oh, it's for you, Fillmore. Yeah, hello. Uh, yeah, this is Fillmore Beer. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. What's he say? What's he say? So, Waldo, I can't hear him with you jabbering like that. Uh, sorry, Mr. Martin. What was that again? I see. I see. What? 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 Uh, well, nice talking to you, Mr. Martin. Goodbye. Confound you, Fillmore. What did he say? Uh, well, if you're going to take that attitude, Waldo, I don't know whether I'm going to tell you or not. After all, it was a private conversation. Yes, but you were using my phone. What do you think I am, an answering service? Well, uh, he just wanted to let me know that his next job is to rob the poor man's bank at Bud Long and Adams. That's it. We've got him now. Uh, but Waldo, he told me not to tell anybody. Well, that's all right, Fillmore. There's a little of the fink in all of us. Come on, man, let's get down to Bud Long and Adams. But Uncle Waldo, isn't this a job for the police? Uh, perhaps Puppet is right. Uh, wait a minute, I'll call them. Busy. Come on, we haven't got a minute to lose. Now listen, you wait here. We don't want to be obvious. I'll just walk in casually and nab him. Ah! Hold up! Get the number of that truck. That's him, all right. The masked Martin. Yes, that's got to be a mask. Nobody has a face that ugly. He must have this mask on with epoxy glue. We better take him down to headquarters. But, officer, that ugly mask is my face. Will Waldo be able to convince the police that the ugly mask he is wearing is really his ugly face? Tune into our next episode. Waldo keeps a straight face or the man in the ironed mask. <laughs> In our last installment, the police mistook Waldo for the masked Martin. That's him, all right. The masked Martin. Yeah, that's got to be a mask. Nobody has a face that ugly. He must have this mask on with epoxy glue. We better take him down to headquarters. How many times do I have to tell you this isn't a mask, it's my face? Yeah, yeah, that's what they all say. But, sir, the person you're holding is not the masked Martin. Then why is he wearing that disgusting mask? It isn't a disgusting mask. That's his disgusting face. Look, here's a photo of Waldo as a baby, a teenager, and as he is today. Well, all right. We'll let him go on one condition. Yeah? That he keeps that face out of sight till Halloween. Say, uh, what's our plan now, Professor, to catch the masked Martin? Our plan, Fillmore? Our plan? Our plan is no plan. Hey, that's pretty good, Professor. Uh, what's it mean? It means exactly what it says. I do not plan to assist in the capture of the masked Martin. I do not plan to stick my mask that a nose if where it is not wanted. Uh, but, Waldo, where is the old fire? The esprit de corpse. After all, the locks on the wing, the snails on the thorn. Hoppity, if there's one thing I can't stand more than a bugle-blowing bear, it's a platitudinous bromidic bear. Now, just a minute, Waldo. Little did our friends know that at that very moment, the masked Martin was planning a robbery that was to affect the lives of all three of them. When it comes to robbing, I use my noodle. My next pilfery will be Fillmore's bugle. Gee, Fillmore, I'm worried about Uncle Waldo. He's been sitting there for the last three hours mumbling to himself. Uh, maybe if I play a happy little tune on my bugle, uh, that might uh, cheer him up. Uh, great owls and pussycats, Hoppity. Uh, somebody's filched my bugle. Waldo, 
Waldo, there's somebody spilled with my bugle. Music lover, no doubt. Eh. This is the work of the Masked Martin. Uh, gee, how do you know, Waldo? Because Fillmore pinned on your back is a piece of paper. And on that piece of paper is scrawled, the Masked Martin was here. Uh, gee, Professor, that's amazing. Elementary. What do we do now, Uncle Waldo? Well, we all know that we're up against a crafty criminal, but we also know that this time he has gone too far. Uh, how do we know that, Professor? Because he has stolen your bugle, Fillmore, and the temptation will be too strong for even Martin. Temptation? To blow the bugle sometime. Somewhere in this city, a bugle is going to blow. And when it does, we are going to be there. <laughs> Do you know what that is? That's beautiful, that's what that is. But of course, that's my bugle. Nonsense, I've never heard you play the bugle like that. Hey, doggone it, Walter, what's the matter with you? That's my bugle, and I, I'm gonna get it back. That's the most beautiful bugle passage I've ever heard. Such virtuosity, he's a Paganini of the brass section. That Waldo, that is the best Martin. Let's go grab him. <laughs> Play bugle solos like that anymore. I got him, Hoppity. There you go, go, go call the police. Such triple tonguing, such a vibrato. We've got him with the goods, officer. Good work. All right, you come along now and don't give me any trouble. No, wait. I cannot deprive the world of a bugle player like that. Officer, it was I. I am the masked Martin. Oh, oh boy. boy. Your gallantry's touching, but I must confess, I am the masked Martin. Frankly, I need a rest. Well, there goes the greatest living bugle player in the world. There's but gee, Professor, do you still got me? I know. Thank <laughs> you. 